Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of July 11th, 2013. Um, for folks watching at home, the air conditioning is not working. For folks here, I'm not telling you anything new. Um, apparently, we're cutting back. Uh, and, and also, ironically, we may be exceeding fire capacity in this room tonight. Um, we're going to start with public comment before we convene the meeting. The rules for public comment are uh, you are welcome to speak on any topic. Anyone is welcome to speak on any topic, uh, abiding by the terms of decorum. For three minutes, there's a timer. It will go off. You won't get tasered if you don't finish by three minutes, but we would ask that you please finish up and work on be fin uh, working on your final sentence by the time the three minutes expires. And we're going to go in order on the list of people who signed up on the on the pedestal. So to start, uh, first Emery Ford, please. Oops, excuse me. <clears throat> My name is Emery Ford. I live in Ward 7 at 364 Spring Street. I am here tonight on behalf of the Task Force on Stormwater Management and Flood Control. The task force was appointed by the council with members from all the wards, Smith College, the Chamber of Commerce, and two mayoral appointees. We met 12 times over three months and developed a plan, there's the plan, for a utility fee for storm and stormwater and flood control. Our findings were reviewed with the Joint Council and the DPW Committee on July 8th, and a written report was submitted. I'm here to urge the Council to approve the report the task force issued and recommend that the Council engage in an outreach program to inform the citizens about the report and the need for funding the stormwater management and flood control needs of Northampton and its citizens. I'm done. Short and concise. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next up is James Bernard Nash. And please, also, one of the other things is when you step up, identify yourself and your address. But also appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, counselors. My name is Jim Nash of 18 Montview Avenue. I'm a board member of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association and a former member of the Zoning Revisions Committee. Today, I would like to share with you two documents. You don't have to read them. I just ask that you look them over to get a sense of what they are. These are examples of design standards. One features regulations for urban townhouses, uh, urban townhouse development in Toronto. I do not necessarily ascribe to the specifics of the regulations, but I do admire the clarity. It's pretty evident what developers can and cannot do in Toronto. The other document features design standards for Village Hill, right here in Northampton. While a bit more, more vague than the Toronto effort, it is, an example, the, it is an example of the city using an outside consultant to develop design standards. Urban design standards are not just about what looks nice. They are about requiring the basic features that make living in Northampton desirable. Front doors, front walks, sidewalks. Design standards also pr promote private space, such as patios and yards. Design standards regulate development so that it includes these basic e the, b the basic elements of urban design and preserve neighborhood character. Today, there are rumblings about the impacts of zoning changes on property taxes. Property owners are concerned they will be assessed value based on the new dimensional standards that considers any open space as an opportunity for infill. The difference between modest infill development and urban subdivisions is anyone's guess, and it has resulted in a lot of property tax worries. Two years ago, in this room, the Zoning Revisions Committee submitted a report recommending changes to our dimensional requirements in order to meet the goals of our sustainability plan. It was the ZRC that got this zoning change rolling. However, the ZRC worked by consensus, and an essential component of reaching unanimous agreement was the shared recognition 
that Northampton needed strong design guidelines to temper zoning changes. Thoughtful design standards, as recommended by your own Zoning Revisions Committee, would go a long way towards relieving this anxiety by outlining the difference between modest neighborhood infill and subdivisions in people's backyards. I ask that you not approve this package until it includes the infill design standards recommended by the ZRC. I re recommend that the City Council do as uh, the city do as it's done before in the past and hire an outside consultant to develop what is needed. Thank you for your time and I'm off to a softball. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Um, he is practiced it, that. He, he did. Quickly rehearse at home. Uh, is it Joshua Cortez or Contes? Coates. Coates. Not even close. I'm sorry. Thanks, Joshua. <laughs> Uh, Joshua Coates, 327 North Farms Road in Florence, and Ward 7 is my ward. I'm here to speak regarding the results of the arbitration between the city and the firefighters union. I own a home in Northampton and I pay taxes here. My wife grew up here and her family is from Northampton. My daughters will go to school here and grow up here as well. I work as a firefighter and a paramedic for the city and I'm proud of all these aspects of my life. My goal is to hopefully change the minds of any counselor willing to listen or at least any, everyone, or at least help everyone understand what is true and what is not. I would like to thank any counselors in advance that already planned on voting for the ruling. For those that are voting no or unsure, please consider voting yes so you have more time to get the details you need to make an informed decision. Recently, a counselor appears to have, in poor faith, gone forward in various media venues and vilify the fire department. He is quoted, they aren't team players and that we were the only employees of the city who refused to work with City Hall. He said, other people are going to take this on the chin. He also links the timing of the arbitration finding to the results of the recent override. Any research at all would have revealed the arbitration ruling was made before the override vote, and they are in no way connected. I feel that this is needed to be clarified as this same counselor does the same thing year after year because of some bizarre vendetta he holds against the department and I hope that everyone is as tired of it as I am. In 2009, the Firefighters Union was asked to, by the city to forgo their contractual pay raise of 3% and to freeze their steps in the department's step system for a year to prevent layoffs and financial burden on the city. We agreed. We were the only union to do so, and despite threats of layoffs, none came. Every other union received their raises, and they also received new contracts. In essence, we were the only team players, and we are now being punished for it. I have always been extremely proud to be a firefighter. Nothing can change that, and that is a sentiment shared by all my brothers and sisters at the fire department. I love the city I live in and the people who live in it. I want my daughters to grow up here feeling that their father and his coworkers are respected, and uh, I want them to enjoy the benefits we have as residents. I want our city to be proud of our firefighters all the time, not just when we fight fires or provide me medicine and, life and life-saving skills. Honor what we do for you and the community and ignore falsehoods thrown at us from those that are misinformed by, the by funding the results of the mutually agreed upon arbitration. And to the counselor that told us, shame on you when they came in tonight, I will never be ashamed of my family nor bringing them to somebody somewhere that as important as this. And I don't think anybody else on the department feels that way as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thomas Clark, please. My name is Tom Clark. I am a Northampton native. I live at 30 Berkshire Terrace in Florence, Ward 5A. I'm in the 29th year of my service as a captain and an EMT on the Northampton Fire Department. I'm proud to say they are the finest, bravest, most dedicated and compassionate men and women I've ever known or had the pleasure of working with. I urge you to vote in favor of funding the contract settlement for the firefighters. This may not be a politically easy thing to do, but it is the right thing to do. After over three and one half years of negotiation, mediation and arbitration, 
there is finally agreement between the union and the city to settle this contract. This settlement is the result of a fair and impartial ruling that both the city and the firefighters agreed to abide by. Let me state that again. The city and the firefighters both agreed to this process to abide by the arbitration decision. In other words, to bargain in good faith. Even if you don't believe there's a legal obligation and there is no binding obligation, there's most certainly a moral and ethical one. Let me explain the facts. We've been without a contract for over three years. Our last contractual increase in wages was on 7-1-2008, over five years ago, largely due to our 911 ambulance service, which also brings in significant revenue to the city. Our workload and call volume has increased to an average of over 7,000 calls per year. In spite of what uh, Councillor Tacey was quoted in the paper, the firefighters were actually the only union to play ball with the city and agree to give up our step increases and 3% COLA that was due on 7-1-2009. This was supposed to help prevent cutbacks. We agreed to this, other, other unions, no other union did. At the time we were promised we would receive these, these raises in the following year. That did not happen, nor were we able to secure a contract agreement until now. For us, it has been zero, 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 zero. Four zeros in a row. Yet the other city unions that did not play ball and kept their contractual raises for 2009 were also able to secure current contracts with modest increases. So what they have already received, that is what we are asking for now. All we ask for is fairness. This settlement is by no means excessive, and neither the city nor the firefighters got everything they wanted. The bottom line is that it merely makes us whole in terms of approximate parity with the police officers and other city unions who have current contracts and receive their contractual increases in 2009. Please approve the funding to settle this thing. Treat us with the respect we deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Crimmins, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. My name is Sean Crimmins. I'm a firefighter paramedic for the City of Northampton and the local 108 Vice President in charge of JLMC and EMS oversight. I was hired by the City of Northampton in 2004, I'm sorry, October 4th of 2010, three months into the collective bargaining process for our expired contract. Prior to being hired by the City of Northampton, I worked for over 12 years at a high volume private ambulance service in Western Massachusetts. While there, I was involved in every aspect at every level of a private ambulance service. There is a significant difference between the level of commitment and dedication between the private ambulance services and the Northampton Fire Department. As a paramedic for a private ambulance service, I was responsible for checking my truck and equipment, carrying, patients on, caring for patients on calls, completing my paperwork, cleaning my equipment, and going home. The education required to work as a paramedic involved three months a three-month EMT class, the 18-month paramedic program, biannual CPR ACLS, 25 hours of Con Ed classes, 48 hours refresher program. Morale in the private ambulance service was very low and it clearly showed in job performance and in patient care. Three years ago, my compensation at the private service for a starting paramedic was $19 an hour. My leaving pay as a paramedic was over $25 an hour. As an employee for the City of Northampton Fire Department, I was required to be a paramedic to be eligible for hire. So in addition to all of the previous mentioned training, I was also required to have 168 hours of in-house training, 504 hours of Massachusetts Fire Academy training. I'm required to main certifications in Firefighter 1 and 2, Hazmat, Incident Command, and to attend regular training sessions on every shift that I work. As a firefighter, I'm required, it is required that I am proficient with operating an ambulance as a paramedic, driving vehicles that normally require a CDL license, operating a pump to supply water to a fire scene, operating an aerial ladder truck, performing low angle rescues, operating extrication equipment, dealing with brush fires, supplying water via tanker shuttles, making water rescues with a boat, and oh yeah, charge into burning buildings with an ax and a halligan, put out a fire, and pull people to safety. 
In three years, I've, in the three years that I have been a firefighter in Northampton, I have personally treated three individuals who have doused themselves in gasoline and lit themselves on fire, treated multiple patients in cardiac arrest, and many other types of serious situations. I am paid $18.27 per hour in my third year in, of employment. Every firefighter in the department has stories similar to mine. The level of service from the firefighters in Northampton is second to none. The firefighters at all levels here in Northampton are extremely dedicated, professional, and highly skilled individuals and deserve to be compensated fairly without political posturing. This is not a union fighting an employer. This is people doing what is right for other people. As employees of the city of Northampton, we should never be treated as a savings account in the Bank of Northampton. I respectfully ask that the city council vote yes on funding the settlement awarded by the JLMC and as requested by Mayor Narkowitz. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Matt Lundberg, please. Didn't those sirens sound during the budget presentation by the chief, too? Councilors, thank you for letting us speak tonight. My name is Matthew Lemberg. I'm a member of IAFF Local 108. I've been a firefighter in Northampton since 2001, currently serving as a captain and paramedic. I'm speaking tonight to urge you to fund the recent arbitration decision rendered by the Massachusetts JLMC. Many things have been said about this award decision about my brothers and sisters in the media over the last several days. I'd like to set the record straight for your consideration. Fact. In 2003, Northampton firefighters took a 0% raise. Fact. In 2004, Northampton firefighters put into motion a plan to be the EMS provider for the city. This involved extensive training and time commitment above and beyond normal firefighting duties. This service would eventually add between one and two million dollars per year in revenue, and now that revenue goes directly into the city coffers, including $850,000 that was added to the city reserves when the EMS reserve receipt account was rolled into the general budget. Fact. In 2006, Local 108 members were asked to change their insurance and were told that no other union would receive monetary compensation for changing. We settled for language changes to the contract and were then informed that NPD had received a 2% raise for changing their insurance. Fact. In 2009, the powers that be asked that Local 108 members take a voluntary 0% raise to help offset costs and avoid layoffs in a year they were, where they were scheduled to get a 3% raise. We were told that all bargaining units would take a zero and that money from the override would be directed back into the fire department budget. We were duped. NPD and Teachers Association did not take zeros that year. The override passed and no money was ever directed into our budget. Fact. Contractual step raises were frozen without negotiation with the local. Local 108 members were forced to sue the city for those contractually guaranteed raises. We settled with the city, but the fact that the mayor at the time would disregard the collective bargaining laws cost both the city and the local more money than if the steps had not been frozen at all. What I'm getting at is there's always an untold side of the story. A local media outlet ran a story the other day which stated that we were not team players. I beg to differ. I would offer that we are the ultimate team players in this city. The facts above show that we are willing to put ourselves out there to try and help the city out to the best of our abilities. I was reading some web comments in regards to the article published in the Republican the other day. One of the comments stated that we were greedy and that we are union thugs. I'm not a union thug. I'm a son, a brother, a husband, a father, and a Northampton firefighter. I work with the best in the field and I'm proud to call them my brothers and sisters. They are worth the investment you make in them and they are always there for you. Counselors, I please fund the JLMC decision. Thank you. Scott Flynn, please. Good evening, Councilors. Scott Flynn. I'm the current president of the Northampton Firefighters Local 108. live at uh, 52 Hadley Street, South Hadley. Um, I'm not going to repeat the points that my brothers uh, have just made. They're all valid and truthful. Um, what I would like to say is that uh, this has been a long time coming. It's been over three and a half years, as Brother Clark had pointed out. Um, we as a department need to move past this process. It is essential and critical to the success and the future of the department. Um, this award has been a long time coming, and it seems like it's fair. It's the only process that we have to go through where we agree, both the city and us. And we get to this point now where we're understanding that this may not pass. And that doesn't feel very good, and we understand that the economic climate is uh, not very good out there. Um, but with that being said, if you look back to 2010, and you look at fairness, and you look at what the firefighters had done, uh, we came through with the city. Uh, we did it in those other years that Matt Lemberg had mentioned. Um, ironically, the other day, Jim Bridgman, 
printed a story in the Gazette under a look back under the 10 years ago. I'm just going to take the liberty to read it real quick. The city's $58.6 million budget is predicated on a one-year pay freeze for all city employees. A term Mayor Higgins is still trying to settle with some bargaining units. But negotiations got a booth Thursday when the firefighters union agreed to a reduction in pay. The firefighters union has shown a real understanding of our fiscal constraints with this, the mayor said. And then the second point is Glenda Stoddard had become appointed as the city's new human resources, uh, director of human resources. Stoddard has served for several years, uh, for the last two years as the assistant director, was unanimously endorsed by the city council's Thursday. She takes her news post next week. We came through in 2003, we did in 2006, uh, other health insurance changes in between. 2009, we came through in a big way for the city. And to not fund this award and not take that into consideration uh, seems like that's the shameful act to do. And with that being said, um, if you can't vote tonight, I implore you to table the vote or to uh, vote yes today, so allow yourselves more time uh, to better understand the case. It seems like you're getting one side of the story and it took us three years, ultimately 24 hours of testimony in an arbitration and numerous um, hours outside of that to get to this point. So here we are and I can only ask you to please vote for this award, fund the judgment and uh, work with us as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Terry <laughs> Cole, please. Good evening, counselors. My name is Terrence Coles. I'm the attorney for the Firefighters Union. I presented the union's case at the JLMC. I was asked by the union to speak briefly to you about the legal reasons, the legal basis for why you should fund this award. Um, as uh, Scott just mentioned, this process is a long time coming. It started years ago, over three years ago. There was an attempt to bargain the contract. That ultimately led to Im impasse. There was an attempt to mediate a contract. That ultimately was not successful, and therefore the parties wound up at the Joint Labor Management Commission with a neutral arbitrator hearing the facts of the case, hearing why the firefighters union deserved what they were asking for, hearing why the city was able to pay for what we were asking for. And ultimately, what we got was a neutral decision by the arbitrator awarding us the, the minimal wage increases that we're seeking. Now, the reason for the JLMC process is because the state legislature realized the importance of having stable labor relations between police and fire unions and municipalities. And therefore, that's why you have binding, a binding arbitration decision which is binding once it gets funded by the municipality. Now, it's clear that, um, as, as Scott said, there were three days of testimony, thousands of pages of documents in the form of exhibits, including experts from both sides testifying on what the city could pay. And if you read the decision, it's clear that the arbitrator took that into account took the city's finances into account, took uh, the history of the city's finances into account in issuing that decision. Now, as you also know, um, the Mayor Narkowitz and the executive uh, is legally required to support the arbitrator's award. He legally is required to present it to you and ask you to fund it. However, two things have happened. One, you'll be funding it out of the stabilization fund instead of the general fund, meaning that you need a larger majority to, to uh, fund it. And I would argue you should be funding it out of free cash. Two, we believe, and we, have, and we just discovered this today as a result of receiving communication that the mayor sent to you, the counselors, we believe that the mayor has deliberately misrepresented the state of the city's funding. And uh, President Flynn gave you the um, Mayor Narkowitz's press release um, from December 12th of 2012. If you'll just bear with me 30 seconds, showing seconds. that there was $2.8 million in free cash certified for fiscal 13. 
$2.8 million in free cash certified to department revenue for fiscal 13. Turns out, yesterday, the mayor sent you a chart of general fund reserves trying to, quote, educate the council as to where, what money the city has to pay for this award. If you look at, and I assume you have this or you have it in your email, if you look at fiscal 13, the mayor asserts that for fiscal 13, there was $278,299 in free cash. Uh, please summarize. Okay. I think at a minimum, you need to consider the evidence, all of the evidence. At a minimum, you either, and I want you to know that the union is uh, seriously considering taking legal action because we believe this deliberate misrepresentation is in, in violation of law. We believe you should do one of two things. Vote to fund the award or table it to actually hear all the evidence, look at what was presented, and make a reasoned uh, decision on whether the city can in fact afford this. We believe it is, it, is, it can. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next up is Jim Spencer, please. Good evening. Time to shift gears. Let's go to 12 Middle Street in Florence, and that's where I live. Been there for 68 years, and we have a parking issue. We've had a parking issue in Northampton since 1954. It's getting worse. It's getting much worse. The parking places are used up every day. People have looked at post solutions, two-hour parking, one-way street, lines, whatever. There is no good solution. There really is. It's going to cost them too much cash. It's going to be bad on their clients. It's going to be bad on the people. What, I, what I'm asking the council to do tonight is make a decision, yes or no. If you vote yes to keep the two hours, that's fine. If you vote no to keep the two hours, then we really, really want you to put the lines in, paint the lines, and that's going to be an issue. This very morning, I had to call the traffic commission to come help and tag attack our car because I had to drive on my grass to get out of my driveway. People had parked in my driveway. This is the fifth time that's happened. So we've got to do something. I'm pretty much a calm person. Now, change gears again. I'm a Northampton firefighter. For four days, I was a Northampton firefighter. I left Northampton to go to Vietnam because it was safer, okay? It isn't legal. It's not a big deal. It's what's right. Vote yes for these guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Patty Tibbetts, please. I'm Patty Tibbetts, and I've seen you before. Um, I'm here to speak first for, um, I, I've been on Middle Street for 35 years already, uh, so I've been here for a while. Um, I'm here to speak first for uh, Nora Kalina, who couldn't be here tonight, and I have a statement that I'd like to read uh, from her. And then I have just a short thing that I want to read, because I pretty much agree with what she has written here. Sorry for my looking down, I don't have this memorized. Uh, my apologies for not being here in person. My family and I are out of town. I want to thank each of you for your careful consideration of the issues that are affecting Middle Street in Florence. I recognize how difficult the situation is and appreciate that as a group and as individuals you are very much trying to find an equitable solution. I would like to share with you some thoughts as you consider how to move forward. The issues of how, uh, of how the quality of life have, has been affected was raised at the last meeting. I can share with you a range of concerns. One, more often than not, I am unable to exit my driveway properly because there is not enough space. The radius is too tight and I have to pull out onto the sidewalk across from my home in order to complete pulling out. Two, there's a lack of visibility from Middle onto Chestnut and North Maple respectively. Three. More than one neighbor has shared that cars often overhang their driveways and do remember that there are some temporary lines in place right now which people are not responding to. 
I've witnessed emergency, this is four, I've witnessed emergency vehicles having to back down the street because the street is too narrow and too packed. Five, folks use our street as a parking lot and as part of this means some people are, are very loud, my children have been awoken and there's litter on the streets. Many times I've heard that doctors and medical staff say that they should be able to park as they wish since Middle Street is effectively, uh, I effectively part of downtown. I would argue that we are part of downtown, but I would say that city streets have limited parking. Middle Street should be no different. In addition, we have not been thoroughly, we have not been thoroughly, what has not been thoroughly discussed is that even if there is not parking to rent, there is viable property for sale in Florence. 53 North Maple Street, for instance. Maybe 10 Main can write to homeowners and make an offer to purchase their property and then convert it. Perhaps these can be considered as solutions. As you consider strategies for moving Florence forward in an equitable manner, I ask that you not forget a very basic point. 10 Main Street clearly does not have adequate parking for the size of the businesses within it. Is the zoning still appropriate? Is it fair to the other businesses who have had to provide adequate parking at enormous expense and effort? I ask that you please not put businesses' needs above the residents' needs. That completes that statement. I can just run through mine really fast. You know who I am already. And this statement is very short because you've heard from me before. I wonder why after years of discussion, five to be exact, safety issues remain on Middle Street getting out of driveways, getting out of, onto the street, getting up and down Middle Street, and having to weave back and forth to navigate around cars parked for nine hours while dodging moving traffic along the street. I wonder why an equitable and, and safe use of the common space is so difficult to achieve. Don't you wonder, too? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Tony Patillo, please. Tony Patillo, 14 Autumn Drive, Florence, Mass. I'm, I'm here about the payments going out to the fire department. If you folks vote yes today, that becomes a binding agreement. Your options are either tabling it or vote no or yes. If you vote yes, it's a binding agreement. One of the issues that came up with the negotiations for the wage freeze was the establishment of the ambulance service. That service part of that deal was that 22 percent of the revenues ended up getting, going back to the fire department in the means of stipends. Now this went back to the firemen on top of overtime, on top of weekend differential, on top of career incentives, on top of the city paying for their EMS training. This deal has given them almost million, well over a million dollars has been paid out in stipends. And it was, a it was a negotiated deal, so be it. But the taxpayers of this city have to fund that. And, you know, things aren't getting better. Uh, and you've got to really consider whether you're going to go ahead and continue and approve this uh, contract, because if you do, there's another stipend that's been added that adds another $1,500. These have got to be looked at. The city has got to look at how we're spending the money, and this is an area that that, that money could have helped the city. These guys do a hell of a job. I work with them. I understand, but I'm also a taxpayer. I'm also a citizen. And the general welfare of the citizens are what's most important to me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're now on to page two. Fred Schaefer, please. Uh, and now on to something uh, different again. I'm here to comment on the zoning changes uh, proposed by the planning board. Um, I was uh, here at last month's meeting and I spoke briefly to you then. And at that meeting I was struck by how many homeowners got up to speak um, and uh, how few people there were who were renters as I am. I live at 24 Paquette Avenue, I rent. And I aspire to be a homeowner uh, one day in Northampton. With the current availability of housing, especially close to downtown, it's really very, very difficult to tell you firsthand. Um, and I believe that the proposed zoning changes um, would help enormously for me personally and people, um, in my, or people like me in my situation. 
Um, as we've heard tonight, uh, the city can use extra revenue. There are plenty of good things, uh, some of which we've heard about tonight that the city could do with extra money. Um, the proposed zoning changes would uh, enhance the revenue situation for the city. So you have a long night ahead of you. There are lots of other people who want to speak. But I, I do urge you um, tonight to, to vote in favor of those proposed changes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Jeff Cooley, Is I reading this right? Uh, may I please have my uh, chief in my, in my place? Sure. Thank you. Chief. Especially in front of these guys. <laughs> I'm Joe Tassoni. I'm one of the doctors and one of the owners of 10 Main Street. I'm here about the Middle Street parking issue. I'm here to ask you to not impose any parking restrictions on Middle Street. You know me from prior ordinance committee meetings and prior town council meetings, and I've emailed all of you. I think you know my issues. Florence is a growing community. The major reason it's growing is because of the medical professional buildings that are located there. Valley Medical Group, Brick Mill, Silk Mill, 10 Main Street, orth orthodontists, plastic surgeons, you name it. Medical office people are generally good neighbors. We're there during the day. We don't park there at night. We don't park there on weekends. You know who we are, so if there's a problem, you come to us, we fix it. We've been very, very um, open to the neighbors on Middle Street to try to address all their concerns. I agree that there shouldn't be parking on the corner of, of Chestnut Street and Middle Street. We have no, no disagreement on that. I believe cars should be ticketed when they overhang the, the um, residents' driveways. In fact, the residents come to us, we get the people to move their cars. Um, I think it's, it's important that um, we get together and get along. And I think we're good neighbors. We turn our parking lot lights off at night so it doesn't bother our neighbors. We keep our building in good shape. We police the area where the, where the uh, middle street is and we're available if there's any problems. So for the good of Florence and for the good of the medical community and for the good of the business community in Florence, I, I would ask that you uh, not impose any parking restrictions on, uh, on middle street. We already, we already rent a, a lot of parking at great expense from the local church. We've looked at other places in the area to park, and they have all turned us down, including the bank and the real estate agency. And it's just not something people want to do. Uh, so with that in mind, we are available. We, we bend over backwards to try to keep our neighbors happy, and we're willing to continue to do that. And I just ask that you don't impose any parking restrictions on, on uh, Middle Street or any street, for that matter, in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Marcy Clark, please. Hi, my name is Marcy Clark. I live at 84 Williams Street. I'm here, I was here last time to speak on this issue and it's also in keeping with the zoning um, question that's before you today. And I'm here again to sort of reiterate some of those points, the two main ones being that um, the strong competing issues that I've seen brought forward from our Office of Planning and Development. Um, one is w of which is infill development, which is what we're contending with with the rezoning, and the other is open space plan, which is also perceived to be of value to the city. It is a value to the neighborhood where I live, which is over by um, bordering on the meadows. It's a transition neighborhood, actually, even though it's zoned URC. Um, and I fail to see the rationale between these two competing interests, and I think that it, it, they really come under fire within our um, residential area. We've had to fight for the little open space that we have protected there, and I think that this rezoning would further um, threaten that and threaten the, the progress that we've made. But the third point that I didn't make last time that I'd like to make tonight is there haven't been as many people speaking about zoning tonight, but last um, meeting there were several people speaking in support, and every single one of them was an individual property owner like myself who was, who was um, expressing their concern and their interest and their desire to either make a, an existing second, second unit, I'm assuming, um, conforming with rezoning standards or the possibility of adding zoning. Um, what you didn't see are, were any developers. Um, speaking to this issue, and you never will. They will never come to city council and talk in favor of rezoning. Um, but you can bet that they are interested. There are properties probably within our area that would be of very big interest for multiple developments to rezone to developers. And my neighborhood isn't really concerned about the individual property owner who might want to add an additional apartment. We are concerned about properties being sold to developers, which is which are the same folks we've had to contend with in the past decade or so. 
to protect the open space that we have. Um, I think in, in support of that then is um, Jim's recommendation, Jim Nash's recommendation that design standards are really what's at issue here. Um, the design standards that he, that he mentioned and that the, the chair of the zoning um, committee last meeting mentioned um, have not been adhered to and do not, are not reflected in this zoning proposal and those are the kind of design standards that actually open the door to the kind of development that we are concerned about. And so I would ask that you consider um, not accepting this proposal until those kinds of accommodations can be reflected and, and better meet the concerns and the fears of the people in our neighborhood and other neighborhoods throughout the city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Fred Zimnock, please. City Council, my name is Fred Zimnock. Uh, I'd like to say a few words about the uh, zoning package that you're going to consider. Um, there's a lot of details to talk about on the zoning package, but it's probably a little too hot to do that tonight. But I'd like to bring up one issue that, that came up uh, in the neighborhood and I don't think has been completely resolved. If you do vote on this issue, I think you ought to know the uh, complete effect of everything that happens when you do, zone, uh, do vote on it. And one of the issues is what's going to happen to property assessments. So if you do change the zoning, uh, what's going to happen to my property? Will the prices go up, go down, change the taxes? I think you ought to understand what that means and be able to explain it to all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, John Dunn. Evening. Counselors, uh, I'm going to say uh, slightly more than 1,000 words. This picture is 1,000 words, we think. Uh, the picture is a, a painting from the dike looking down onto Henry Street and Ventures Field Road. Uh, it was painted by a young woman uh, who noted the unique qualities of that particular area, which is an area that is threatened by the zoning changes that are proposed. Um, there's been some talk about heroism tonight. I think you are all heroes. I know that you're here doing this for nothing. Uh, every Thursday night takes a long time. Lots of committee meetings. Um, and probably it would be nice to take this ordinance and say, ah, we got something done. Let's move on to something else. I urge you to not do that, uh, to look at it again because we're, I, I do believe there have been some oversights in the way that it's been uh, <clears throat> promulgated so far. If you take a second look, you might be able to tweak some of the issue, t tweak some of the, the details and make a better thing. So I'll give you another look at the picture by a woman named Claire Lau, who um, uh, I think really captures what we're trying to preserve over there, um, much better than anything I can say. Um, there is one other point I want to make, which is uh, I read that uh, the concern about the assessments going up is kind of a false concern because even if somebody has a lot that is worth uh, more because of its ability to be developed, the city doesn't typically assess the property based on that. But there's nothing saying that they couldn't. And an assessor looking around for some ad additional uh, uh, revenue could do it. It's perfectly within the rights to do it. In fact, somebody might say, how come you're not taxing that property at what its real value is? And you'd have a hard time coming up with an argument against that. So um, I think that's a, a serious issue for people. If people are threatened with having to give up their own housing because the property tax assessment goes up, you'll see very rapid uh, and very negative changes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff Napolitano, please. I'm going to defer to Professor Voss. OK. Uh, Professor Voss is next. Paul Voss. Paul Voss is fine. <laughs> I just want to say, I know you guys are very busy tonight, so I just want to say a few words. I'm uh, here to speak about um, public streets, um, but public streets for aircraft uh, and drones, the public streets that are above our heads. And I'm here to speak in favor of the resolution on drone aircraft. Um, while we have quietly been going about our business, the FAA, Congress, and lobbyists have been redefining uh, the public airspace uh, so that UAVs may now have public right of transit 
through our backyards at low altitudes uh, with no real limit. And um, i just read a quick quote from the president of the largest drone lobbying organization, AUVSI, representing 2,100 organizations in 55 countries. He said, quote, the only changes made to the House bill were made by, U a were made by AUVSI. Our suggestions were taken word for word. This is the these are regulations that are now pushing drone aircraft lower to the ground, stripping us of our property rights. And, um, and this is not new. Uh, the last time uh, this, our rights were ever under such threat was in the early 1920s when the uh, American Bar Association tried to redefine so that property owners owned none of the airspace above their property. Um, and there was one very tenacious lawyer who was the general counsel for the National Association of Realtors. And he fought this tooth and nail. And I want to read you one very short quote. It sometimes seems to me, this is from Nathan, um, this is uh, from, um, excuse me, Nathan McChesney, uh, who is general counsel, National Association of Realtors, 1920s. It sometimes seems to me that those who represent the landed interests have no idea of what is necessary to protect them. They are immersed in the immediate business, apparently without care as to the general movements which are undermining their fundamental rights. This is happening again today. I thank you for paying attention and for passing this drone uh, airspace resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Bowen, please. Good evening. I'm going to speak on a completely unrelated topic to anything that's on the agenda tonight. Can, can you identify yourself, Patrick? Yes. Please. I'm Patrick Bowen from 95 Square Avenue in Florence. So I wanted to request that the council will consider adjusting the meeting times for the committees that it has. Currently, eight of ten of the council committees meet regularly at 5 p.m. or before, which limits the who can attend those meetings to people who don't work during the day or work or who only work within the city and can commute before those meetings start. So I'd ask that the council consider adjusting meeting times such that more people can engage in their local city politics. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leah Sakala. Did I pronounce that right? Oh, thank God. Okay. Good evening. My name is Leah Sakala, and I live right across the street at 199 Main Street. And I'm just here briefly to express my full support for the resolution before the council regarding drones. Um, I urge the council to take a stand against devastating drone warfare and intrusive surveillance by passing this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Aaron Cantrell. Hi there, I'm Aaron Cantrell, 45 Fort Hill Terrace. Um, I'm a co-founder of CoFab Design, a local product design and machine design company. I'm here tonight to speak on the drone resolution. Um, I want to urge you guys to vote yes and support it tonight and remind you of how last time on first vote I spoke of the potential impacts to small businesses and how it will stifle innovation. Not only will it stifle innovation um, for small businesses, but it will also make it harder for the people who will employ this technology. Um, there's a multitude of uses that I talked about last time, um, and specifically with our local agricultural community, one of the big applications of this technology is uh, within agriculture. And so I urge you to support this resolution, um, and in doing so, you're ensuring our rights and the ability for people to use this technology on their private property and not make it federally controlled airspace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mac Everett, please. Mac, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am Mac Everett. Um, I live on 40 Valley Street in Ward 3B. And like my neighbors, uh, John, Dunn and Fred Zimnock. I'm, I'm here to speak about the proposed zoning package and the, the effect that it may have on property taxes, specifically affecting owners like myself, whose land could now be defined as including secondary building lots. My wife and I have lived for 33 years in a 1,000 square foot five room house in URC that sits on 18,000 square feet, a lot that we garden intensively. 
My question is simply this. With the proposed lowering of building lot sizes to 3,750 square feet, will we one day open our tax bill and find a very large increase above and beyond the recent override or proposed stormwater fund? Seeking an answer to my question, I spoke with people at both planning and assessor's offices. At planning, I was reassured that I would not be taxed for potential building lots unless I took steps to survey and register them with the city. I breathed many sighs of relief. My wife and I have no interest in selling off a lot or two. We'd rather grow food, flowers, and shade trees and preserve some green space in an otherwise densely populated neighborhood. However, the assessors explain that they are required to determine land value by its best and highest use. They suggested that if the proposal passes in its current form, they would probably be expected by the state to assess house lots for any additional development potential. If this were the case, the two additional lots and two additional lots were envisioned on our large lot, we expect that our taxes could increase by approximately $1,700 at today's rates. As retirees on a fixed income, this expense would be a real challenge to absorb. And I can think of 10 other properties in Ward 3B alone in a similar position. I'm still looking for an answer to my question, and I hope you will have one before you decide your votes on this proposal. I ask you to vote no if there is any possibility that potential infill size building lots would be taxed. Our tax burden has just gotten it's significantly heavier, as you know, and the possibility of an additional surtax on our lot is disturbing. Thank you. Uh, Claudia Lefko, please. <clears throat> Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. Ward 3 is bordered by the Connecticut River and extends into the Central Business District. It's a mix of farms and farmland and dense neighborhoods. We have two high-rise housing complexes for elderly and others who qualify for subsidized housing and low-rise housing for the same population on Fruit Street. We have apartment buildings and condominiums. We have two recent infill developments, City View and Bixby Court. We have Interstate 91 and two exits, the sewage treatment plant and the three county fairgrounds. We have the airport and the new hot spot in town, Tully O'Reilly's Bar on Pleasant Street. We will soon have a new community arts trust on Holly Street and a new as yet unknown development where the lumber yard was on Pleasant Street. There will be a new hotel on Conn Street, and we don't know what will happen to St. John Cantius, which is also up for sale. I think we have a high percentage of renters in Ward 3, and it has historically been known as a low-rent district with a number of SROs. In the 80s and 90s, we were seen as the best location for halfway houses and programs, and we had more than our fair share there. Ward 3 is a lively mix and a challenging place to live. There is enormous diversity of people and purpose, and there are a lot of competing interests at play. Many, many more than you would find in strictly residential neighborhoods, for instance, around Smith College. Given the existing demographics, I cannot understand why the planning department has targeted us for more potential development. We are already stuffed to the gills and struggling to live side by side in harmony. Why are some areas in the city off limits for infill projects? How is it the development in URA is limited to single family houses? Who is defining where we begin to measure the downtown central business district? And what is walkable distance and desirable for infill? Surely one can walk to Forbes Library or City Hall from URA streets like Washington or Ward Avenue in the same time it takes me to walk there from Valley Street. Or we could ride a bicycle. In fact, up there, they have bike lanes on a wide and smooth, well-paved Elm Street. There are beautiful sidewalks on both sides of the streets, and they have the best crosswalks in the city. Travel is safe, quick, and easy. The city is imposing different standards for different neighborhoods. 
The proposed zoning regulations will exacerbate these differences. The pro proposal is neither fair nor equitable. Ward 3 is going to have more people squeezed together into smaller spaces, more cars driving and parking on our narrow, crumbling roads, less green space, space to soothe our souls, and more taxes to sweeten the deal. I ask you, does this sound fair? I think the city planning office is part of the problem, honestly, and I'm sorry to say this, rather than the solution. I would give it high marks on rhetoric and low scores in on-the-ground reality. We had a bruising experience at the Center for the oh, Arts. Yeah. Located in the beautiful former public school, it was sold off for a dime and the buzzword of the day, mixed use. Oh, yeah. I know, I'm almost I'm done. Our city's nonprofit community arts organization was hammered for years by the interests of private developers and condominium owners who were supposed to share but actually dominated the building with their own interests. I'm almost done. And now comes infill, an idea that is being promoted without concern or care for the impact on our ward or the people or the institutions that we have there. We need a different vision for our city. We need new ideas I'm and maybe we need a new planning office we need to focus I'm on sorry. i'm almost done you no, let you the lawyer go have, on so please i'm at the i'm at the very end seated the lawyer we need fact. to focus on sustaining and man maintaining what we already have improving the infrastructure the roads and sidewalks we need better and safer crosswalks in our neighborhood let's put development on king street let's try to fill the vacant Claudia. downtown storefronts and office spaces Claudia, and useful goods and services they, they we need to think excess. about Claudia. that Please. rather than continuous Claudia, and development. Thank you. Um, if, if someone feels like doing that again, I will rule you out of order. We'll go into recess, and, and we will not continue until the person who violates that will quit the chambers. Uh, please, you're not, you're no longer authorized to speak, please, because this is, we're trying to do this fairly for everybody. We have a lot of people who are lined up to speak tonight. And each person is entitled, you can make your point in three minutes, and you did, by the way. So please, I ask people to respect the rules of this council. Thank you. Uh, next up, Tom Holden, please. Hi, I'm Tom Holden, 47 Henry Street. I will uh, I will not use much time, so to, uh, feel better about Cla hearing Claudia. Uh, I won't be nearly as eloquent as uh, those who have spoken before me. Jim uh, Nash, Claudia, and Mac did a great job. I'm just here to say that I'm also concerned. I'm, I'm on one of these uh, large lots down in uh, on Henry Street. Uh, I'm concerned about our property values uh, potentially going up as a result of um, uh, the potential zoning changes that may be ahead of us. I'm uh, concerned about uh, design standards. Uh, we, uh, you know, we have a very uh, homogenous uh, old farmhouse neighborhood there, and I'm concerned if a property is developed in the area with when someone does sell that the uh, uh, that the, the 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 feel of the whole neighborhood will be changed by a particular property or two anywhere along Henry Street or any of the other streets in the area that have large uh, footprints that um, I'm just concerned about changing the fabric of our neighborhood that's all I have to say thank you uh, Joe to Sony please You spoke already? With your permission, we switched around. Joe Tassoni spoke already, so I'm going to take okay. his spot. I'm You're David Berkman, welcome. and I'm one of the uh, physicians at, uh, at 10 Main Street and talking about the parking on Middle Street. Um, a couple of points that haven't been made. I mean, we've been at this uh, meeting many, many times, and these points have been made, but we keep having to come back. Uh, that building is really the only location for cardiology and urology and GI care within Hampshire County. Um, it's you know we serve a great function there for the for the residents of the of the county. We had about 190 signatures that we submitted to you at one of these meetings of people supporting the the their concerns about the parking. Um, 
you know, we wholeheartedly agree with a plan that I thought we had all come to of marking parking spots so that people were not crammed. There's no reason to get four spots in between people's parking, in between their driveways, you know. And for some reason, there was some problem that the, part, that the city couldn't draw those lines. And I heard one of the residents mention that it really, it, it seems like a common sense solution that just hasn't happened. Um, you know, the parking is going to occur anyway. People have to come in and out of the building. And so the idea has always been that better to have the physicians and the staff who are there all day just park once, not move their cars all day. Otherwise, the people are just going to be in and out. It's not like the parking isn't going to happen. Ultimately, you know, these are elderly people. These are ill people. It's a long way for them to walk to get into the building from Middle Street. It's a lot easier for us. And we're willing to do so. Uh, I suppose our option then will be to, you know, find bigger space in East Hampton or, or in uh, Hadley or whatever. You know, we pour a, a fair amount of, of, uh, of, uh, finance, of money into the Florence uh, community. I know I personally spend a whole lot of money at uh, Cooper's and, uh, you know, I know our, the rest of our staff does as well. <laughs> um, you know, we, contrary to some of the statements that have been made, we have gone through great effort to rent as much parking in the area as we possibly can. We have rented every space that the church is willing to give us. We've approached all the other businesses. We really have tried very hard at this. Uh, we have a parking liaison to try to work with the community. And, you know, in the end, it's a, I think it's sort of common sense issues about trying to work it out. And again, I just would come back to just please mark parking spaces. I think it'll make it better for everybody. Thank you very much. Can I ask you to identify yes, yourself again one more time? I'm sorry? Can, I, can you identify yourself, please? Oh, did I? I did, but I'm sorry. I'm David Berkman. I'm Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, principally, you were the next up on the list, so we'll just. Yeah, a little OK, quick. all Thank right. Uh, Vicki Van Zee, please. Right, if you'll just hold on. I just called Vicki Van Zee, and then you can come after that. Zen first. Vicki, are you here? Okay. I'll take Vicky's spot. Well, Maddie, hang on a second. He's next. You'll get a chance. I'm not on the list. That's all right. I'm offering uh, the floor will be open to people who are not listed. Everyone will have an opportunity to speak for three minutes. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to thank the council for allowing me to address them. Uh, my name is Dr. Jeff Cooley. I work at 10 Main Street in Florence, Massachusetts. I'm a gastroenterologist. Uh, I'm fortunate to work in the city. I grew up in Northampton. My parents live here. Uh, and I'm proud to be, proud to be a taxpayer uh, of the city of Northampton. The issue about parking on Middle Street, people are going to park there. And it's going to be whether or not people are going to park there all day once, or whether or not elderly patients are going to be moving in and out uh, so that uh, you'll have much more traffic. Uh, you're more likely to have people who don't sort of know the rules about Middle Street. And I would say that we've made great efforts to be rule followers. And I would think that any reports that our people from Middle Street have made about people parking in their parking lots or, or in their parking driveways is totally unacceptable. And we would totally agree that any mechanism to avoid that, to make sure that our Middle Street um, clients are comfortable and safe in their homes, would be an absolute priority of the 10 Main Street um, group. And I would think that par parking lines may be an appropriate way to solve that problem. But there is going to be parking on Middle Street. This is not Brookline, Massachusetts, where it's parking permit only. And there will be no parking on the street except for homeowners. This is Florence. It is not a separate street. Middle Street should not be able to separate itself from the rest of the city. And I think that rather what we need to do is work together, which has always been what we have hoped for, and working closely with Middle Street residents. And it would seem that putting in parking lines to make sure that the, pe the people who live on Middle Street are safe would be the most logical way to do that. And I hope that that will satisfy our Middle Street um, uh, neighbors uh, who we cherish uh, working with very carefully. Thank you to the committee. Thank you. Uh, the, let's see, the last name on the list is Andrea Fox, please. Last but not least, Andrea Fox, Prospect Street, Northampton, Mass, Ward 2. Um, I'm here tonight as a uh, former public employee and a non-Northampton firefighter. And uh, I'd like to speak in favor of uh, asking you to fund the arbitration award through the JLMC. 
Um, I'm here to ask you to do that because um, I've read the decision. Uh, I was impressed by the folks who were on the panel. Uh, there were three very um, distinguished and uh, respected members on that panel uh, who were very thoughtful in their decision. And um, I was struck uh, by a number of things in that decision, including the fact that the history of bargaining with public safety in this city has been to maintain parity, economic parity with each group, uh, which I think is a fair and reasonable concept. And I think that each of us, most of us, would acknowledge that those folks work very hard, they're well educated, they're very professional, and they do a good job. Um, and they're team players. I would say that when I heard tonight uh, that the folks, the firefighters have not had a raise since 2008, uh, I hadn't realized they had gone back that far, I was aware of what was in the decision, um, that that seems pretty unfair. They've gone without a COLA, they've gone without step increases, and um, with each year that brings them that much more behind everybody else. Um, you all know that public employees can't strike. Um, so in Chapter 150E of the Mass General Laws, the provision for them is to go through the process that we've heard about tonight. And um, when folks didn't, main, when they weren't able to get agreement at the table, they went to the commission and had this process. Uh, I believe all parties entered into that process in good faith, um, as the law expects. And um, I'll just say that the firefighters in this city have already provided these services to the city. It's not like we're looking forward to say, okay, you know, how much shall we pay them in the future? I mean, we're looking at a number of years that these folks have been doing their job, doing it well. Uh, the city, as we know, has suffered a number of terrible um, fires and things that they have uh, had to respond to, and they've done a great job. So I would just say that um, I believe that the majority of you in this body respect and appreciate the level of professionalism that these folks provide to our neighbors and to our community as a whole. I believe it is incumbent upon the City Council to honor the process afforded under the law to both the firefighters and the City, and I urge you to honor this process and fund their award. Thanks. Uh, that's the end of the list. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Uh, Maddie, you were up next, and then we'll get to you. Hi, I'm Maddie Blanchett, and I live at 41 Valley Street. Thanks for the chance to speak. I'll just speak on a very small um, piece of the impact that I would be very concerned about if the zoning changes that are before you, if you pass them. And I live also in that edge of Northampton, of the meadows, and my house is on Valley, but actually in in fact, it faces Montview, and uh, which and Montview has uh, open space on the other side of it. But from what I understand, uh, in this this street, Henry Street, it's really just a quirk that they have these long lots because they were originally farms and they're farmhouses, and then they were artificially separated from the meadows by the development of the highway. And um, However, it's been like that for a long time, and now it's a residential area, and uh, and it has very narrow streets. Uh, the sidewalk on Montview, um, it doesn't have a curb, and then it just sort of ends. So, um, in our neighborhood, um, children play Foursquare in the street. In our neighborhood, uh, elderly people who actually even need assistance walking take frequent walks around the neighborhood looking at people's flowers. It's, it's, it is absolutely uh, just a constant uh, flow of bicycles. Um, this is an area that I just feel like uh, we're not going to get tax dollars for free by putting 80 new units along Montview. Uh, we don't have the infrastructure of roads to support those trips back and forth. I mean, uh, talk about neighborhood character. I mean, it would be entirely uh, changed. So I, I really want you um, to think about that. And John Dunn showed that beautiful f uh, painting of the of the of the scene of the nature. But I, I wanted to give you a sense of the people that are there, and they're really heavily, heavily using that neighborhood, and they're um, using these narrow and crumbling streets by bikes, children, elders, and the idea that we could have just uh, a wave of multiple townhouse units that go back to the highway it would be uh, just like like in no way uh, reminiscent of how it's been for so long so thank you very much thank you 
Uh, yes, sir, you're next. Good evening. Uh, Hamath Swami Nathan, uh, North Maple Street, uh, Florence. Here to talk about the zoning. I was here about a month ago. I'm here to reiterate my position uh, on zoning to uh, pass the proposed changes in the legislature. Um, I'm a renter. Uh, and I think another fellow spoke on the same sort of uh, uh, note in terms of opening up access um, to uh, housing. You know, I'm, I live in Florence. There's really nothing I can get affordably here. I might have a single income. Um, so I urge the council to pass the legislation. I, I, I heard someone mention earlier something about how you guys need to do something to feel better about yourselves or something. And I think that's nonsense. Um, I think. And then I also heard something about bringing in an outside consultant. And the term analysis paralysis comes to mind. I've read the changes in legislation. It's pretty straightforward. I think you guys can handle it. And it's been long enough. So I urge the council to uh, take a vote on it and vote yes in favor of the changes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at the time? Um, hello, I'm Sally Weiss. Um, I live at 38 Fourth Street. I'm here to bring the conversation back to the drone resolution, which is on its second reading tonight. Um, I'm a part of the anti-war movement, so I have been part of this um, American Friends Service Committee um, committee, uh, committee that d d has a drawn up the drone resolution along with the help of the, of the city council. Um, I find drone militarized zones very frightening. And I think it really has sort of caught the imagination of the American people that um, we're uh, pretty hesitant about supporting the idea of militarized zone drones that are being used around the world. I want to point out that, um, in general, military contractors make a lot of money. And uh, another thing is that the United States of America is really the chief weapon supplier of the world. And that unsettles me. I understand that the ma um, manufacturing base of our country has gone down, and I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, but I don't like the idea that in the void of it, um, military contractors are who's leaped into that void. Um, the anti-war movement is working very hard in various aspects of trying to get economic conversion, which is the idea of um, not spending so much taxpayer money on excessive weaponry, but on infrastructure. I mean, an example to me is I love trains, and I think we should have a lot better train um, infrastructure in this country, long distance, and we ought to have, a, uh, around all our big cities, we ought to have a lot of uh, light rail. And we don't have nearly enough of it. So um, I'm very proud that the City Council, uh, I think that was two weeks ago, um, seemed to get that the drone resolution, it, 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 it is not all about militarized zones, but the City Council seemed to get the surveillance part and uh, Professor Voss's part about uh, we don't w want our very airspace of our, maybe even our private property to be not ours anymore. So um, I feel somewhat optimistic that you're going to vote yes on the drone resolution tonight. And I'm very proud of that. And I think you all, <laughs> the City Council has a lot of grit to sit here and, you know, uh, we're way past the public comment comment. <laughs> so uh, hang in there. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else interested in speaking? Uh? Okay. Here we go. I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. President, can I, yes. I'd like to request a, a brief recess. Uh, there's been a request for a recess, and we'll take Thank that and Jesse. let everyone. Thank uh, you. Where are you going? down for a little bit if uh, the seven minute recess will reconvene in seven minutes thank you welcome back we're coming out of recess this is the Northampton City Council meeting uh, July 11th 2013 and we're about to convene and I will ask the clerk to call the roll please here 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 present here 
Here. Here. All are present, and we have a quorum, and we are convened. Um, there are no public hearings tonight. Uh, the communications from the mayor, which I can read, which is the mayor's memo. Got this. I should have prepped for this. Thank you. This is a memorandum which you are all receiving, but for the public record, I will read it aloud. This is uh, Northampton City Council from Mayor David J. Narkowitz, date uh, July 5th, 2013. And this is Ray, funding of the Joint Labor Management Committee, or otherwise known as the JLMC decision. Please find and close a copy of the opinion and award decision issued by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Joint Labor Management Committee, the JLMC, for municipal police and fire interest arbitration panel in the matter of interest arbitration between the City of Northampton and the Northampton Firefighters IAFF Local 108. In accordance with Section 4A of Chapter 589 of the Acts of 1987, I am submitting for your consideration financial orders necessary to fund the decision. The JLMC decision awards members of IAFF Local 108 a 2% salary increase retroactive to July 1, 2010 for FY 2011 a 2% salary increase retroactive to July 1, 2011 for FY 2012, and a 2% salary increase retroactive to July 1, 2012 in FY 2013, plus an additional 1% salary increase retroactive to January 1, 2013. The total, estimate, the total estimated financial cost of the City of Northampton's general fund budget for these retroactive wage increases is $406,016. <laughs> I'm recommending that the City Council appropriate these funds from the General Fund Stabilization Fund. In order to keep the City of Northampton budget in balance, I must also request an increase of $222,234 in the FY 2014 Fire Department Personnel Services budget to fund the salaries of the local 108 members at the new hourly rates created by the retroactive FY11, FY12, FY13 wage increases. I'm recommending that this amount be funded by a transfer of $182,000 from the FY 2014 reserve for personnel and a $40,234 interdepartmental transfer from the FY 2014 fire department overtime account to the permanent salaries account. I respectfully recommend that the city council approve these funding requests. Thank you for your consideration. Um, and that, that actually is a communication from the mayor, and that's a, we're not actually going to start debating that yet, just so everyone's clear. Now we're going to move into the other items on the agenda. Um, up next, we have, we have uh, <coughs> the, this is the resolution on second reading on drone air, aircraft. Uh, with the council pleasure, wave the reading. Wave the reading. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? Council? Is there an amendment to this? Yes. Thank you. The, there is amended language that you should have included, and it's. I'm sorry? Date. Okay. Right in the back. This is the amended version. You just guessed. The, uh, the, amended, the amended language is included on the. Um, copy of the resolution that you have dated uh, July 11th, coincidentally. Uh, and I believe you were, the sponsors were forward in the language changes. Yes. Were essentially just that language changes to clean up the, essentially the message is still the same, but I, I could read. Any, not anything substantive, anything? No substantive matters have been changed in the resolution. It's, uh, it's actually just essentially just been recrafted so the words punctuation are, are a little more uh, in keeping with uh, the English language. I move, <laughs> I move the amendments. The amendments? Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded. All those in favor of the amendments? Aye. 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 Now there is a motion on the floor for approval of the resolution. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of the resolution, please, in second reading. Say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any, any no votes there? No. The resolution passes in second reading. 
Uh, we're now to the one minute announcement section of the council meeting. Are there any councilors? Council of the Barge and then Councilor Adams, please. Yes. Um, I would just like to announce um, that there will be an important open public forum, um, which is concerns regarding Sylvester Road. Um, Councilor Tacey and I are having this meeting um, with all the residents on Sylvester Road Wednesday, July 17th at 6.30 p.m. And it will be held at the Godard's Farm and Winery. They have a new pavilion. And I went out and talked with many residents on Sunday and handed them flyers. And they are very happy that we are putting on um, this forum because of the conditions of Sylvester Road. I mean, it's really to the point that it's very, very deplorable and it's unsafe. I have residents who are on wheelchairs, elderly people. It's terrible out there. So anyways, um, I know Councillor Jesse Adams cannot attend it. I don't know if our council president would be available on July 17th at 6.30 p.m., but you are welcome to be there. Ned Huntley from the Board of Public Works, he will be there. He's also going to try to attempt to have the superintendent of streets um, Richard Parcelletti to be there. Um, we've invited the mayor, but there is a conflict there. He has another meeting, but if he can make it, he will be there. Representative Peter Cocott has been invited, and he will be in Boston doing continuously with the budget hearings, and his aide, Diane Seisner, will be coming. So I just wanted to let counselors know that there will be an open public hearing. Councilor Adams? And then Councilor Tacey. The National Alliance on Mental Illness of Western Massachusetts is offering a free 12-week family-to-family education course for family members, partners, and friends of individuals living with mental illness. That includes major depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress, dis stress disorder, and more. Class begins on September 7th at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Pre-registration is required. The course will help caregivers understand and support those with serious mental illness while maintaining their own well-being. For more information, you can call 584-7796 or 413-786-9139, or you can learn more by visiting www.nami.org. Thank you. Councilor Tacey. Yeah, and I just wanted to say that it's at the winery. It's at the pavilion. <laughs> the any, any other one That's announcements? It's a All right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. oh I'm sorry, Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, this is from uh, Historic Northampton. There's a walking tour of the Underground Railroad Saturday, July 20th, 10 a.m. from the Sojourner Truth statue corner of Park and Pine Streets in Florence. Start. That's Saturday, July 20th, 10 a.m. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now to the minutes. Accept a motion on the minutes from the last meeting. Move to approve. And move, we're move actually the 20th group. and the 27th. There's minutes available. You, are, are you moving both? Councilor? I'd like uh, to move both as a group. Got Second. it. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention. <clears throat> Thank you. At this juncture, we're going to recess and go into. No? Nope. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm skipping ahead. Uh, this is a report. Uh, a re this is from the reports of the um, committees, and we're reappointing Deb and Bruce, uh, Planning Board representative, to uh, the Community Preservation Committee, term to expire 2016. Uh, for the the Planning Board has reviewed this with the unanimous approval. Move approval. Motion second. To approve and a second. Uh, Council of Barge, we Yes, and I would like to suspend Rule 31. Second. She's a, a reappointment and has and is on the planning board as a representative so i'm asking for the suspension of rule 31 and move to approve the I, I second the motion okay the, the suspension of rule 31 31 for folks at home is requ uh, usually requires a referral to a committee to re review but the council has asked for suspension of that rule due to circumstances so all those in favor of suspension of rules please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed any abstentions? All right. Uh, the, there's been a motion to approve and seconded. Is there any discussion on the uh, on the candidate, Councilor Freeman Daniels? I uh, 
I have the pleasure of serving with Ms. Bruce on the Transportation Parking Commission. And as far as I'm concerned, if the plan if the planning board wants to make her their representative on every single committee that they're allowed, that's fine with me. She's a she's an excellent. That's a heck of an imprimatur there. So, uh, uh, Councilor Tacy, I'll second that. Kudos to Devin Bruce. All those in favor of Devin Bruce serving as the planning board representative to the Community Preservation Committee with the term expiring March 2016, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Devin Bruce has been reappointed. Now, we're going to recess uh, for Finance Committee. I cede the gavel to Councilor Murphy, who serves as the chair of the uh, Finance Committee, and take it away. Sure, Mary, would you call the roll of finance? Here. Here. Present. Here. So the, the first two orders in finance um, deal with the appropriations for the proposed fire department settlement. And what I would suggest to us is that we just forward them without a recommendation to the council as a whole so we can have a complete discussion about that interest all together in council. I, would be I will motion that. So second. second. Okay, so that's going to be the first two issues with regards to the 406,000 from the stabilization fund and then the other one for the 2014. So any more discussion on that? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then those will come back up in full council right after we adjourn this. The next motion in finance um, deals with uh, money from the Commission on Disabilities. City Council um, approve expenditure from the Commission on Disabilities Fund established under Chapter 40, subsection 22G, and funded by handicap parking violations not to exceed $5,500 for the purchase of an audio system and cart for use at the Northampton Senior Center. Second. Second. Any discussion on this one in finance? Uh, Councilor Barge. Um, I would like to um, have the director of the senior center and also the ADA coordinator from the senior center to come to, us to speak about this. Do you want to have him do it now or in full? Yes, council? now. Now. Yeah. Okay. Motion in finance to recognize the director Second. of the senior center. Second. 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 All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Is she here? Yeah. Yep. Well, there she is. Good, Good evening, everyone. Um, so the Commission on Disability um, for quite a while has been talking about um, purchasing an audio system. And that recommendation comes from um, a number of the members as well as uh, some of the public who does attend our meetings. and. Um, the Commission on Disability meets 99% um, of the time at the Senior Center. So this would be of benefit to the members of the committee as well as the public who comes to um, our meetings. Um, so they would be able to uh, obviously hear better. And um, the purchase, as um, was mentioned, is from the handicap parking fines. Um, that revolving account and um, we did get and, and I should say Joe Cook assisted us quite a bit with putting together um, a couple different uh, vendors and Al Williams from NCTV is the one who put together this wonderful list for us of what we actually need uh, to accommodate the uh, Commission on Disability and Councillor Barge you look like you had questions no Patty and I worked very closely with Joe Cook and because of some of the members on the Commission on Disabilities who are hearing impaired are having a lot of difficulties hearing what is being presented at the meetings and I'm one of them also. We moved on it very, very quickly because even people coming in in the public to our meetings were having difficulties hearing. So. We want to get this going so that we can purchase this. Joe Cook can go ahead and order it, and these meetings will really make a difference for the public and also for the community. Uh, Councilor Tacy. Is this a wireless system? Yes. It is. Okay, thank you. 
so well, and, and I will say this is the first purchase that this commission is making um, with the uh, handicap parking violations it's the first purchase and um, the mayor did approve it when we first started talking about this back in April and Joe Cook as I mentioned before was involved with it um, so we're hoping that you approve it so any further discussion finance no? all in favor of a positive recommendation aye aye, aye. opposed all right, thank you. Thank, thank you. The um, counselors like uh, Patty Shaughnessy to stay for the meeting? No. No. Meeting? no. 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 Thank you, I, Patty. Go oh, find air conditioning. <laughs> Our next order is to um, transfer the amount of $61,500 from the FY13 unused earned leave account to the newly created reserve fund for future payments of accrued liabilities for compensated absences due to employee or full-time officer of the city's um, upon termination of the employment of that full-time officer or employee. So, Second. Second. So this is just moving money that's being used for that purpose into a new account for yep. that yep. purpose. Any discussion on this one at all? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And the last one is a number of budgetary transfers uh, to clean up FY13. Um, the total amount is $45,211, and I'll just run through them because they're, they are, with the exception of one, relatively small. Um, transferring $2,800 to Treasurer Legal Fund from interest on debt and interest on notes for $2,800. Um, to the city clerk for election workers, $17,295. That would come from interest on long-term debt. Um, ballot printing, $8,242. That would come from interest on notes. Uh, service bureau fees, uh, $1,353. That would come from other interest on notes. Uh, central services repair and maintenance, $7,642. That would come from um, sal a salary account. Repair and maintenance of buildings for central services, $4,553. That would come from salaries as well. Repair and maintenance on HVAC systems, other than this room, I assume. <laughs> $3,326. That would come from salary, salaries, uh, technical and professional. The total of all of those is $45,211. And again, this is to clean up and balance off FY13. Move to recommend. Second. Housekeeping. Second. Housekeeping, yeah. Uh, any more discussion on these? Okay, all in favor of Aye. positive recommendation? Opposed? Thank you very much. Oh, we have some late funds. All right. And this is a recommendation from Community Preservation. Whereas the Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability submitted an expenditure application for Community Preservation Act funds for the Connecticut River Greenway project, and whereas the project advances the goals of open space, recreation, and multi use trail plans uh, and the sustainable Northampton plan, and has received widespread support, and whereas the project has already leveraged $800,000 in funding from grants, donations, and other sources, and $190,000 from CPA funds, and whereas these funds will allow for cost-effective construction additions and will increase longevity of the riverfront park, will reduce long-term maintenance costs, and will allow completion of restoration and mitigation required by federal, state, and local permits. Uh, and whereas on July 10th, the Northampton <coughs> Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend 77,000 in Community Preservation Act funds to be used to support this project. Now, therefore, it be ordered that $77,000 be appropriated from the Community Preservation Act funding to the Connecticut River Greenway project and that the grantee meets the conditions approved by the Community Preservation Committee, the Mayor, and the Council, specifically that $77,000 is appropriated from the CAP CPA Budget Reserve account. Move to recommend. Second it. All right. Discussion on this? Uh, is Sarah um, Lavalley here? But Mr. Fiden is here, and uh, Sarah Lavalley is here. Lavalley is here. I, I move that we recognize uh, Sarah Lavalley for president. Second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi. Um, so this was presented as an out of CPA application because a commitment is required at this time to allow the work to take place during the, this current construction season. Um, a CPA award has already been allocated and 
has leveraged $800,000 in additional funds. So most of the permits are in hand and the construction is ready to take place this week. Um, it was unanimously recommended by CPC. They felt that this allocation makes a lot of sense to allow this work to take place now and the cost savings that come, come with it to save in mobilization. And Wayne Fiden is also here to speak to the details of the project, but um, I also provided um, a funding use table that shows what these funds will be used for. Any questions for Mr. Fiden? Um, move to recognize? Well, um, oh, okay, I move to recognize uh, Wayne Fiden. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And if I uh, so for Sarah, then, uh, if I can ask you, this is uh, as a late file. Is there an expectation of two readings on? This? There's not. We we just wanted one reading at this point to um, to be able to proceed. Wayne can speak to that. Okay. Wayne, would you speak to that? Sure. So let's see a very brief background. Um, as you all know, the good news about the recession, if there is good news about the recession, is our bidding. Bidding for the last few years has been incredibly low. The reason we did all well, the bike paths a number of years ago was because prices were coming really low. Unfortunately, that appears to be done. So when we went to bid for this project, we found prices not astronomically high, but they're sort of back to pre-recession prices. Um, so that meant that the money that we had on hand when the project was designed and missed the recession wasn't enough to cover the project. Um, the, we signed a contract with the contractor, Mass West Construction, for the monies we have available. They're beginning work on the project this week. Um, they're not going to get to these particular items for a few weeks, so we don't need a second vote till August. But we certainly hope to get the first vote to, to get a sense to the council whether you're likely to support it or not. So um, the overall project, so some of you know, we're, we're not designing a boathouse. That's not our project. Northampton Community Rowing has a lease for the site, and they hopefully will build a boathouse someday, but that's really up to them. What we're designing is a riverfront park designed around a future boathouse, so clearly we're anticipating that they will build it there, but this park is a freestanding park that makes sense whether or not a boathouse is ever there. It includes a parking lot along the road, regrading the site, um, building a trail down to the water, both a trail so we can bring boats to the water um, and a trail so people can walk, it's wheelchair accessible, and docks down to the water. Um, we have enough money so that when we finish the project, if you don't give us any more money, it will look beautiful. The problem is to deal with the money that we have now, we've had to cut some things out. So for example, the asphalt is much, much thinner than we'd like it to be. What that means is it will look great the first year, but it will start falling apart and won't last. That. So we'd like to be able to restore it to the design that we had when we began the project. Um, the, you know, the great news for this project is we closed on the property on time. So the money, the project's already been moving along, Lane Construction donated the land to the city, and that's been going really well. We're very thankful for Lane. Our fundraising effort actually came in higher than we expected, so we brought in more money than we thought we would. It was just the costs were even higher. Um, with Hampton Community Rowing has stepped to the plate, and so they've given us some additional money, additional $5,000 over and above the $117,000 they've already given us. Um, and so this fills that, that last gap. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Marianne? The point is, is there a possibility for our second reading that we could submit the minutes? I'd like to know what was talked about with this with sure. members of from the community preservation yes. yeah absolutely thank you great uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels you had a question. thank you um, director Fudd did I hear you right by saying that basically you're trying to stave off a more expensive uh, cost I mean I'm, I'm trying to look at this estimated cost if done in later phase versus exactly. so what you're saying is that You'd like this eighty. You'd like the seventy-seven thousand now, to basically add years on to the design, uh, years on to the construction. Right. Remember when you don't? I mean, you all used to roads that last a certain amount of time, then don't last forever. But when you don't have a lot of road traffic, asphalt lasts a long time. So just an example: the current bike path, the Hampton bike path, um, is in need of repair. But that bike path was built somewhere around thirty years ago. 
Um, and it's still in decent shape, although showing a sign of wear. If any of you know the paved trail we have to Fitzgerald Lake, that was built about 22 years ago, and that's in great shape. So when you're not getting the vehicle traffic, when these things are built correctly, they have a very long life. You know, we just want to make sure we build these as well as we built the bike path and, and everything else. So, so what, I'm just trying to understand, estimated cost if done in later phase, which it, this is just an estimate about if if we decided to beef up the the beef up the uh, paving, for example, it would be more money later. But if you it's not so part of that's not part of the master plan. So so let me. I'm, I'm sorry, maybe it's clear. CPA wanted to know what was the cost of not doing the project today. So the binder coat, which right now we have money for a two inch coat, which we'd like to go to two and a half inches. If we don't do it now, and the cost now is $11,000, the cost for remobilizing later for repairing is our estimates about $20,000, so et cetera. So the second column we hope to never use. So if, if you don't get the $77,000, you're going to use gravel for instead parts of, of that's for parts of it, and you want to put, you want to instead put some some pavement down. Right. For the trail to the river, we'd use asphalt no matter what, because it, no it has to be wheelchair accessible, but that would use a thin coat. For the parking lot, we'd use gravel. But if you had this grant, you'd have, you'd have asphalt, which would last a lot longer, obviously. That's correct. We're still going to have an overflow parking lot, which is gravel, but in terms of the primary parking lot, that's correct. Thank you. Any other questions in finance? At our motion, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed. All right. And I believe that's it for yes. finance. Okay. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Motion to adjourn finance? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we're back into the regular portion of our meeting. Cast is the same. <clears throat> And on to the next order, which is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narco, it's ordered that the amount of $406,016 is appropriated from the stabilization fund to the FY 2014 Fire Department retro payments account from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Joint Labor Management Committee for Municipal Police and Fire Interest Arbitration Panel Award. Uh, in the matter of interest arbitration between the City of Northampton and the Northampton Firefighters, IAFF Local 108 for FY 2011, FY 2012, and FY 2013 retroactive wages. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Can we do these two as a group? Or not? Are you moving them as a group? No, let's just take them. I don't think so. Okay. okay, the request is to take them one at a time, so there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. I know there is, so someone better damn well raise their hand. <laughs> it's well, well, I have a, can I start with questions? <laughs> I'm not uh, sure. Actually, if I can, I'm not sure who we second. recognize you want to here. Recognize the city solicitor. I'm not sure that's who will be the best person to answer the question. Okay, so but can I'm I just, ask? Just so we recognize, recognize him. second. Yes. Okay. There's a move. Motion to recognize uh, City Solicitor Alan Seawald and second and all those in favor of recognizing for purposes of questions as we proceed. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Intentions? Okay. And Council So a question I have that maybe counselors can answer, maybe someone else needs to answer it. The question of parity has come up quite a bit in this and in the decision. And so correct me if I'm reading the the other increases to our other unions correctly. The way I read it is that they did get in FY10 they got a 3% increase. But then in the two other years they did not. They were zero funded and in the last year they're getting a 1% increase. That would mean a total during that period of time of 4%. Am I reading that correctly of other people? I think so if, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm looking at the same chart, I think that some got three, some got three and a half, some got one. I mean, they're not, it's not across the board. Uh, I'm looking for that chart here. For example, I saw that Smith Vogue. 
Smith Vogue had three and a half, where others had three. Oh, oh, right oh, here, Bryn. Sorry about I that. Lost, I lost the internet connection, so I can't there get it, is. it on here. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, three and a half went to Smith Vogue. Um, and then, so that's a discrepancy among. Okay. But if we look at, and, and we talk a lot about parity with the p patrol Sorry. officers. If we look at the patrol officers one, FY10, a 3% increase, FY11, FY12, a 0%, FY13, a 1%, which is a total of 4% over that time period. And, and STEP, I think, is the other consideration that was raised in terms of parity. And I think the, actually, the, um, yeah. the panelists, I think the panelists also um, introduced the uh, Quinn as one other criteria. Right. I'm going to leave the Quinn out for a second because the Quinn, I think we'd have to go back historically Just answer your on question for the, numbers. the whole operation with the Quinn. And if right. anyone, I, I looked that up and explored that today. So the Quinn is a kind of convoluted puzzle added in here. But it, on, a, on a quick, and maybe I, I will say a very superficial reading, it looks to me like if we just add this, the, it's 4% for the patrol officers, and it would be a total of 6% for the firefighters. And, it, and we would then need to discuss things like, like the step and how the Quinn fits into that. But that's, that's the basic, my basic understanding. I'm just trying to understand the basic math here first and make sure we're all on the same page with it. Councilor Carney, to that point. Um, well, I guess my comment is a, is a little bit broader than just to that point. And I guess it's because I'm not sure that we, this body, in a, well, probably the four hours that we have remaining, can, can give the same level of analysis um, and comparison and due diligence that the uh, mutually agreed upon arbitration panel did in many, many days of testimony, fact-finding, hearing, thousands and thousands of documents and pages. So I'm, I'm a little hesitant for us to get into the weeds of, the, of trying to determine whether we have the ability to um, come up with a, a different level of parity. The option, I think, was, was made to us, we can either um, approve the appropriation of the 406,000, um, table it, or, or reject it. Um, and then we can, you know, we can give our reasons, but we won't be able to, for example, we wouldn't be able to look at 4%. I've done the math too. I've actually sat down and figured out that 1% is $58,000. So we couldn't choose to, to True. appropriate um, two hundred and ninety thousand dollars, which would be the four percent, as opposed to four hundred and six thousand, much as we may like to, it's not an option for us to say. And nor can I don't I don't think that we can designate what account to take that from. The account that we're the option that we're given tonight requires a supermajority from the stabilization fund of six votes. We can't just change that and say we'd like to offer an amendment for a four per or something reflecting a 4% increase of 290000 from, you know, a, 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 an alternate account that would require only a um, simple majority. I don't think we have that option. And believe me, I've gone through and racked through this, but I, so not to s take, you know, a hostage of the floor, but I'm just, I have many reasons why I will choose to approve the appropriation tonight. Um, and short of that, I would ask whether we could table just so that we had enough time, significant, sufficient time, rather than, as I said, the four hours that we have. Or maybe we can vote to go, go beyond 11 and then beyond 1 in the morning, but I don't think that we have an enormous amount of time to really give this the consideration that it's due. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels was next. I was just going to address that. I don't disagree with the counselor. I didn't want to lead us into the weeds. I was hoping to just establish, and that may be impossible. I don't disagree with you. I don't think it's our job here to get into the minutia of this. Unfortunately, then it just leaves us sometimes with kind of what did they, f what did we feel about the decision from the 
from the arbitrators and how do we think, how do we, you know, we, we have to kind of make judgment calls on that, but I agree with you. I don't think we can get into the minutia, but I wonder if there aren't some basic facts that we can all establish together, and that may be impossible to do. Councilor Freeman, uh, I, um, I, um, I just disagree about process. Uh, I think that uh, we do have an obligation to uh, consider all all the evidence that we can, and uh, and to look at um, look at all the information we can when approving any when approving any uh, um, bargaining uh, contract or or um, or appointment. And um, I think uh, I think that's our duty, and I think that's the the sum of the. Um, memorandum that the uh, uh, solicitor sent us um, I also I think that the mayor might have a point to make about this but uh, all appropriation orders require a vote of six members of the council there isn't a there isn't a cheap way of uh, doing it there isn't a five member majority that can be had uh, we I believe that we could the council could ask for um, ask to appoint, uh, appropriate this money from a different account uh, we can't we can't alter the amount obviously but uh, we could all we could ask we could amend it from from a different account that's our that's our right but uh, all appropriation orders require six votes so um, I don't think that uh, I, I do not believe that um, the uh, source of the funds are uh, is a is a is a problem for the for what the mayor has proposed uh, I Despite disagreeing procedurally with Councillor Carney, I uh, agree that um, that this is a uh, this is a fair procedure, and uh, it's a fair contract. So I am prepared to vote in favor. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm also curious, and I'd like the mayor, or perhaps the finance director, or solicitor—I'm not sure—a member of the administration to inform the council what tabling would mean, because I, I'm not. It seems to me that uh, it would just be waiting another month, but I, I really don't know. I, it, would it be, is it the, w does the thing die? Can the council table it indefinitely? It doesn't seem, I'd like to know. Uh, I, I would defer to the solicitor here on this point. Um, thank you. Uh, tabling this would just uh, move it down the road to the, to the next meeting. It would be back on the agenda and a decision would have to be made. In my opinion, this cannot be tabled. Uh, indefinitely, this council is going to have to make a decision on this at some point, um, and um, you know it's subject to the usual process that that the council goes through when it's being presented with a uh, uh, a, pro a proposed appropriation order from uh, from the mayor, and um, so tabling it is not the the ultimate conclusion of this question. It it. Uh, I think it's being suggested to give you more time to gather facts uh, to support your decision. Just, uh, is it uh, just to, this, to the point, since the, I think we're, yeah, yeah. Um, that's correct. I was not asking to table indefinitely, but rather to give more time to do the very thing that Councilor Freeman Daniels asked, which is to look at what I was suggesting was we couldn't get into the weeds and details in the four hours that we had left this evening. That if we were going to make a decision, um, it would be incumbent uh, upon us to really try to take some portion, some significant portion of the time that the arbitrating panel took. And also in terms of the, I, I guess I'm confused in terms of the members that are required to approve an appropriation because, um, and I thought maybe the, the mayor had an answer to that. Uh, is it? Thank you. I wanted to. Thank you very much, Council, for um, letting me speak in favor of uh, this recommendation to you for funding. Um, I wanted to just, first of all, by way of background, in terms of why I am recommending that it come from the Stabilization Fund, I know there was a reference earlier that it should have been a transfer from free cash. Now, a transfer from free cash would, in fact, take a five-member majority. The difficulty is there is no free cash after June 30th. And in fact, I stood before you um, on June 27th and said, "Could you please? I, I'm requesting that we transfer $400,000 from free cash into our stabilization funds because once we get 
past June 30th, it goes away until the state then does its whole recertification process and it's not available to us until later in the fall. Uh, last year, it was as late as I think uh, December before we then have access to free cash that's certified again. So that's the reason. The only other place that you could, the only other way you could make, you could fund this um, with, uh, without uh, going into one of our stabilization type accounts would be to um, transfer 406,000 from somewhere else in the FY14 budget. So that would require us to make cuts somewhere else in the FY14 uh, general fund budget. Um, and so that's, that, those are really the options. Uh, which would, re and you know, I don't have to talk to you about what cuts entail because we just went through a long conversation about the choices we have uh, to come up with cuts. Um, so that's why this is, I mean, this is the purpose of the stabilization fund are for these kinds of uh, emergencies that you cannot budget for. Uh, and so that's why the recommendation is made from stabilization. Thank you. Uh, Council of Barge. No, I didn't have my hand up. I just. Oh, I thought I saw your hand Thank up. Thank you. I owe you one. Uh, Council Murphy was next. In the well, I just want to point out that the question in front of us isn't, you know, is this a fair deal or not? You know, this is the deal that the JLMC put in front of us. The question before us is, can we afford to fund it or we can't? And that isn't going to change this meeting, next meeting, two meetings down the road. I mean, if we can, if we can afford it today, we can afford it tomorrow. If we can't afford it today, we can't afford it tomorrow. So, you know, we didn't negotiate the city side of it. We, we, we don't participate in the negotiations. We just are being asked, okay, the JLMC said, this is what we suggest to you. Will you fund it? And that's our question. Can we or can we not afford the money for the proposed settlement? And that, I don't think that's going to change between now and the end of the year. You know, we either can or we can't. Uh, Councilor Spector. <clears throat> yeah, more general point. I, I just want to say I think it was unfortunate the characterization of the firefighters in the press it was way over the top. I think the firefighters have always been team players. I've, I honor what you've done. You know that through the years I've supported you always, both on the radio and the newspaper, and fought for you guys. Um, and you know you're heroic. And uh, I don't doubt the work you do. And in fact, through this whole period that's been tough for you, I don't think there's been a moment when you haven't maintained the same level of professionalism. No one would even know this was going through. And I trust that whatever this vote is, that will continue. It's probably the hardest vote I will take. Because like Mr. Murphy, uh, I think it is a question of can we afford this? And I know that the the arbitrators looked at this for 24 hours, a piece of it being how, how much the city could afford. Some of us have looked at this situation the city's in for years and years, hundreds and hundreds of hours. And I, I think they came up with a fair decision. But you know, we've been in a position for years where we haven't been able to fund a lot of very fair things. And it's been an incredibly painful period. I don't think there's been a year that I've been on the council, which I think is nine years now, where I don't wish we could raise a lot of people's salaries. And I don't disagree that the firefighters deserve to get more, and in fact, a lot more. I do disagree, and I, I respectfully disagree with the decision. I think they did the best they can. And in fact, one of the reasons I disagree and don't think they took a good look at the city finances was I don't believe there was absolutely any connection to the override that just passed at all. I think it's silly to even think there was. However, it concerns me because they looked at this and said even if the override hadn't passed and we'd be sitting here tonight, their decision was we could afford this. And I ask any counselor to tell me that if we hadn't passed that override, they could sit here and say in addition to not passing the override, in addition to those cuts, we could also fund this. God knows I want to fund it. But I don't think we can afford it. And I think that fact, the way they looked at this, without that other two million and such, and they said we could afford it then, I think also, getting back to the press, <laughs> a few weeks ago when the override passed, as if the override, the lead on the front page was 
flush with money. If you, those of you remember that. Flush with money when they override pass. The school committee did X, Y, and Z. We are not flush with money. I've never seen us flush with money in the last decade. What we are doing is we're still barely holding on. And so regretfully, at, at, I think, and I th the last piece is I think what we are instructing both parties to do is I think we're giving directions saying, look, at least I am saying, I think there should be a substantial increase. However, this would be a line when we send the mayor back in to say, we can't agree with you of this amount of an increase. Go back, know what our bottom line is or our top line of the amount. Get this done, renegotiate this quickly. Any other, uh, please quiet. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Adams. I'd just like to say, I, I would like to echo what Councilor Spector said eloquently. I, I respect this department very much um, and everything you all do. I also respect the JLMC and their decision. Um, and I read it and I believe they're, impar they're impartial. But again, we're not, we're not mandated to uphold their recommendation if we disagree. And unfortunately, respectfully, I disagree. And I'm sorry. I apologize to all of you for that. But I, I can't support this. Um, I don't think we can afford it. And my no vote is to, is, to, is, is, is to have you all go back to the table. And I understand how long you've been at it. And I understand the impasse. But in this present recommendation, I can't support. And I apologize for that. But I, my vote will be no. Thank you. Any other? Uh, Councilor Jamie Daniels. <coughs> uh, I, uh, I again disagree about um, what the council's job is here. Uh, as we all know, budgets are an expression of priorities and values. It's not just dollars. Um, you know, you can say, <laughs> you can say, let's let's imagine, for instance, for example, a, a different uh, United States Congress that votes to revoke funding for a war. Um, it's the it's the power of the purse is is an expression of values and priorities. Um, it's not just about whether we can afford it. I, like I said before, it's about whether you think that this um, award and the process that took place was fair, whether the level of service has been uh, excellent um, or adequate, uh, or and whether the department um, you believe is, um, is deserving of, of this and um, we do not negotiate. Uh, that's something that the, is done by the employer. But um, in my the way I look at this, uh, if the process was fair, I read the uh, I read the award. It seems pretty um, much like uh, the city got some of its demands, or got some of what it wanted, um, and didn't get everything. It seemed the the union didn't get everything that it wanted. Uh, so. Um, and I, I, I do not believe that uh, going back to the bargaining table, which would, would, could conceivably result in, again, mediation and another costly uh, arbitration, that uh, our results would be any different, um, especially given that, uh, unfortunately, the mayor has been um, working very diligently to build up our city reserves. Um, I don't believe that the... Uh, that any arbitration panel would believe that uh, we we don't have the ability to pay if this were to drag on. So uh, I, again, I'm going to vote in favor. Uh, I'll just reiterate, my no vote is absolutely not um, stating that I don't think that there's a high quality level of service coming from the department. And that's certainly not what it is. And it's certainly not to suggest that it's not deserved. Um, because it absolutely is. And I'm going to guess that every counselor would like to support this, even the ones who do vote no. But again, in my opinion, I don't think we can afford it. And again, I apologize. Uh, can I ask the mayor something? Um, and and I, the mayor is, of course, constrained by the decision and agreement. I, but this is to the point that the uh, lawyer representing um, the 108 brought up about the discrepancy between the two numbers Certainly. Um, presentation. Would you address that, please? I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, Councillor, uh, there were several different information requests that came like, uh, to me. Councillor Adams, Councillor Carney, and Councillor Murphy, I believe. Yes, and okay. Councillor Labarge okay. as well. So I 
tried to provide the information to answer those questions. So, um, Councillor Adams had asked, uh, what is the current, what is the status of our reserve funds, and what would they be, uh, you know, uh, with the decision? And so, what if you look at the chart that I have that I put together, um, and these are the first chart, and this the first part of it is just sort of historical. And this is, you read at the top, it says balances as of uh, June 30th. So this was the balances that are on our um, end of year um, fiscal state, our, our audits, the audits that we get. You know, and those are the audits that the, uh, when we talk about the bond rating, a process, because that was part of his question, we have to submit those audits, they review those audits. So it's correct that at the beginning of the fiscal year 13, we had the, the free cash balance that was certified by the state. Um, but that's not what we have. That's not what we closed out the fiscal year with. And I have, and I, so, and again, I, this is the, this is the list of the appropriations that the council made. I actually had the finance director go back and get the list. So that you can see, you remember, you know, you remember that throughout the year, I came to you in FY13, just like, you know, previous fiscal years to ask for transfers from free cash to fund various items that we need to fund. Um, and so this is the, you know, the starting balance of our uh, free cash balance at 712102. And then this shows all of the items that we, that we the council appropriated to pay for. Uh, you can go down the list month by month, line by line. And the <laughs> end of year, including those last transfers that we did into the stabilization and the capital stabilization fund. And so the closing balance as of June 30th uh, is was that 278 to 86 so and the same follows through the closing balance of the prior years what we closed the year with in our reserves again just for the people at home the the stabilization funds um, those remain when the fiscal year closes those don't those don't um, unlike free cash which you know goes away those balances remain and that's part of the reason why uh, you know, we have the higher threshold, we put it into these accounts, and we have the higher threshold uh, as a reserve fund. Um, and so that's what this chart outlines, and it shows, again, just what, at the close of those fiscal uh, years, where, where those reserve funds were and, and where they stood. And you can see at the end of, uh, at the end of FY13, uh, which was just a few days ago, we had 705558 in capital stabilization. But then, of course, we transferred funds into that. So we start the fiscal year, uh, the opening balance with the, with the amounts that we have right now, plus the money that we appropriated as part of the FY14 budget. Um, so that's, that's what the chart said. But to his essential question, he wanted to know what was the current balance of reserves that we have right now uh, to draw from and what, the, what would be the reserves after uh, the award. So that's what the information is. Yeah. As opposed to the snapshot that he was, the, the, the attorney was referring to. Uh, well, if I had said that this is the balance as of June 30th, I mean, if I had said these are the, that would this have, is the free cash that was certified right. by the. That would not have been a fair would not have Clearly, that would not have been an accurate statement. But I can't say that we still have the $2 million when, you've, when we've appropriated it and already, you know, spent that money. So that's, I'm trying to give you a sense of where we are right now, um, here and now, today. And if you'll allow me, I want a follow-up question to the solicitor. Uh, um, can you describe the process? Um, well, the process, should the, uh, the motion survive tonight, is pretty evident, so I don't even think you need to describe it. If it were to fail, what happens? The parties go back to bargaining. It starts again with bargaining. Is there any point at which the arbitration group is reconvened to or provide any oversight in that? Uh, at, at impasse. At impasse. The, the process starts over again. Starts over again. Uh, just a, this is a question for the mayor. Uh, we did just transfer from, um, we did just transfer to approximately a quarter million dollars. Am I right into the stabilization fund anticipating this award? Yeah, yes, we did that, and then you may recall that, um, well, we, not, we, we moved it into stabilization, into capital stabilization, just generally. You may recall at the last meeting when I did the override um, allocations, right. I mentioned that we were, tr we were putting some additional funding 
into the um, reserve for personnel account, uh, which is that's part of the second appropriation uh, for 14. Um, that's the account, and I had said at the time, I think I even put it on my sheet, that that was an estimate. Um, so that was where the quarter million came from? In anticipation of a potential uh, JLMC settlement. So that was, that was the 255, I think that was, was that yes, 255? Yes, exactly. Is that right? And we had initially, on my initial uh, override five-year projection chart, we had tried to factor in that we actually had that money factored into public safety, um, but then, of course, the budget year closed uh, without a resolution at that point. So that's why we asked it to be allocated into this reserve for salary, or, or yeah, reserve for personnel account, uh, which we use for uh, you know uh, collective bargaining settlements and other reserve matters. So, so that's the that's the second. That's the transfer. That's, yeah, that's the current and that's forward. Exactly. That's that's if the council approves my recommended uh, appropriation to to fund the retro, then the effect of the retro means that we need to increase additional rev, uh, additional funding to that budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, councilors, uh, the two councilors haven't spoken yet, so I, before I ran time to the so consultation. Wasn't the original estimate one hundred eighty-two thousand, and it was short by about forty thousand. What 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 I uh, what we were using uh, as internally uh, again we're we're trying to um, obviously plan and budget for for some level and so we the number we were using was 182 that's correct um, and so uh, we that was the methodology we were using obviously um, you know the award is has come in at the level that it's come in at and so now we have to go ahead and, and calibrate that. Um, so that's that's why there's a slight difference. Um, we, again, we were just trying to be prudent and put some funding in FY14 in reserve um, for the possibility that there would be uh, this change, potential change to the fire department <coughs> budget. But again, I just want to remind you that has nothing to do with this order. That's uh, that's uh, the focus is, is for the JLMC decision is really on is on these retroactive wage increases. Um, just trying to put it into perspective yeah. how we afford it. Um, the so the 406 will come right off the 891. Uh, that is correct. Th those are the balances that we have right now in those accounts. And the one or the 214, which is the next? Um, I, know I can't see the damn. I don't know. I just, if I could ask the chair, I, I don't know which items are on the table right now, so I don't. Just the four We only moved the okay. one for the so. four hundred six thousand dollars transfer, so we're speaking to that right now. Um, the second one's two twenty two. Two twenty two. So, okay. And there and there, the, and and I would remind the counselors that he, the, uh, the mayor is being very circumspect when he speaks because the. the, the and we don't want to put the mayor in a position where he, he might be called upon to opine on something that he's he's already advanced as a recommendation. So, a question which is very broad in general. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I'm going to stop for a minute. Okay. Well, no. Councilor Barr, should you have something? Um, I know we're talking on. The four hundred and four thousand dollars. I have great concerns as a city councilor. I've always supported the fire department, always. Even when I recall, when I was a city councilor along with Councilor at Large Bill Sullivan, we actually went in line with the fire department, marching down on Elm Street to <coughs> the hall. I have received so many calls from residents, not just on my ward, but in the city, who were very concerned about this amount of money. I also am concerned tonight hearing on the other side from their attorney of statements being made of we were not being given the correct information. Now I'm hearing my mayor and we are giving the correct information. And I thank you, Mayor, for doing that. I have always supported the firefighters and believe they are due 
some retroactive increase in pay. However, I believe the JLMC decision is not the right one. I think a 2% wage increase is too high, above all due to our physical situation. Secondarily due to parity across all unions and finally due to the dangerous president of relying on the stabilization fund to pay substantial wages. I respect the JL JLMC process and I believe that the City Council is exercising its duty in the process to review the decision and determine whether it is sound and serves the city's best interest, both in promoting equity and physical stability. I believe the JMC's determination is erroneous on both counts in view of the fact that Northampton cannot afford to draw $406,000 from its stabilization fund. And it is not fair in view of union wages across the city over this, over this time period. This is my reasons I will not support this. I do hope for continued negotiations to a resolution that gives all firefighters their due in the context of the city's needs and fairness overall. And I do have to say, we have one of the best fire departments in our city. I've always honored you. The calls have been unbelievable at my home of people really concerned about this amount of money. Councilor Carney and Councilor Murphy. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I was willing to defer to the councilor if you. Is that your preference? I don't mind. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, you know, just from what I'm hearing from other councilors, it, it seems apparent this, this um, uh, appropriation may not pass, but I do want to state my reasons for um, voting in the affirmative to uh, approve the mayor's recommendation. Um, first of all, uh, it's, um, this is the mayor's recommendation um, based on a process where both parties entered in good faith. It's been three and a half years. The uh, arbitration itself cost over $100,000. That's more than 25% of the, of the award. It didn't cost the city that much, what I'm saying. It cost the city 60000 and I'm just giving for the benefit of the doubt if it only cost the union half of that. I don't know totally what it cost them, but if it only cost them half, because I'm assuming they, their, their legal fees may be, may be less than the city's, it cost over $100,000 to, to do this arbitration. I'm just assuming because they have a union that negotiates and works for them as part of their retainer. So, um, the city and the union agreed to this process. The panel itself was impartial. Um, a third party, a neutral party, certainly far more impartial than this body. I mean, I, I don't think that any of us can claim to be as impartial as the Ira Lobel, the uh, mayor of West Springfield, and the uh, uh, firefighter from Longmeadow. <laughs> so, Again, the, 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 it's already been stated that this is the only process that's granted to public sector uh, employees, and especially to public safety employees, because the, the reasoning is that the, there, there could be a threat to public safety if we don't have a mechanism whereby um, parties can come to, can come to a, um, an agreement. They try to first get parties to agree before going to arbitration and as the JLMC site says it's really in about 15 percent of the cases they have to go to the point of um, doing the amount of te taking the amount of testimony fact finding um, all that was involved in this uh, and again it's many many days of, of hearing and thousands of documents as we heard so um, I understand that this is expensive, but at the same time, when, when I hear counselors say that we can't afford it, I do wonder what we can afford. Because even, you know, it, it, when I do the math and I look, you know, I know that the, the 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 406,000. 
that means that, you know, an overall 4% equals 290,000. If we can't afford 406, how can we afford 290? And, and again, there's a lot of talk about taking it out of the stabilization fund as opposed to someplace else. Uh, I'm assuming that that's where the money will come from. Whether it's 200, and, whether it, the city proposed 116, somewhere in the middle between the 406 and the 116 is a figure around 290. Again, I don't know whether it, it seems like it's not going to be the case that when we send parties back to the table tonight, there will be a quick resolution since we're still back at one zero and one and a proposed three and three and three. And when, how those parties get to, a, get to a compromise or get to somewhere in the middle, I don't know. If it took three and a half years and $100,000 of an arbitration, I don't know that it's going to happen very quickly if we just send them back to the table. I, I hate to see us um, really s spending more and more money in legal fees, which is what, we'll, what we do when we, when, we, um, when we vote to not accept this recommendation of an allocation tonight. We are going to spend money. We're not going to spend it in settling the contract. We're going to spend it in lawyer fees for going back to the table. So we just need to know that this is not a, a no-cost no uh, solution. So uh, again, I, I, I want to see this settled. I know it won't be settled tonight. Um, I, and I'm sorry about that for, for everybody, for the city. I know it, it puts the mayor at a, um, it, it's hard to go back to the table when you've, you've recommended an appropriation and then you have a legislative body that will not approve it. Um, I think the credibility is diminished at the negotiation table. It, it also, I think, sends a, an unfortunate message to the rest of our city unions that while we grant the administration the power of negotiating our contracts, um, when push comes to shove, um, they can't expect that, that the council will back up the uh, administration when it has, when it comes to uh, appro appropriating the funds for you know a negotiated a negotiated agreement. So again, I understand where where the councilors are. I understand that people feel as though we can't afford this. But again, my thought is if we can't afford 406, I don't see how we can afford 300. And if that's what's in the middle, then you know it, it seems like to say we what can we afford? And I guess ultimately, we will have to make this decision again. The mayor will need to come back to us, whether it's um, nine months from now or two years from now, or God forbid, five years from now. The mayor will need to come back to us and ask us to appropriate the funds to finally settle a contract. I hope it's not something that goes back, you know, eight years. I, I don't, in fact, I don't, I think there's a point at which we can no longer allocate funds. In this case here, we're going back three years, and we're trying, the, the panel has suggested that we take into consideration also that fiscal year 10. Um, I believe that there's a point at which, and some of the, some of the uh, cases, I, there are very few cases where a city council or legislative body has, has rejected the uh, JLMC decision. I think we only know of two or three. Um, but I don't think that, I think there's a point at which we cannot go back and retroactively a allocate funds. So I, I'm, you know, it's, it's uncharted waters, I think, That's to a certain it. extent. Um, I'm, you know, I'm disappointed that um, it, it looks as though we may not pass this, but. I, Again, um, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful if we, uh, if this fails tonight, that the parties can get together and at least, at least take some um, piece of the arbitrated decision, and uh, look to that for some guidance. Maybe. Um, I know we're not required to because, as the solicitor just told us, we just go back to square one. We're back to three, three, and three on one side, and one zero and one on the other. And how long it takes to come, I don't know. I don't know how long it will take to come to some mutual agreement since it took 
three and a half years to get to this point. So I guess that's what I'll say. Uh, thank you, Councilor Murphy and then Councilor Freeman Daniels. You know, when I walked over here tonight, I was thinking to myself that, that I had grown up with most of the members in the Northampton Fire Department until I got here and saw Jack Favaro and I look at the youthful faces out there and realize that it's probably your parents I grew up with. That's kind of a, was kind of a surprise to me. You know, there was a question of respect that came up in a lot of the public comment and I want to assure you that I have respect for you and all city employees. Uh, I won't say anything here or in the press um, that's disrespectful of Northampton firefighters or any city employee for that fact. I don't doubt your sincerity, your loyalty, or your commitment to the city and to the department. Um, unfortunately, I chair the Finance Committee and Capital Improvements Committee and have a really pretty good understanding of the city's financial situation. And it's for that reason that I don't believe the city can afford the proposed settlement at this time. I don't feel the process has been wasted. I think w both sides probably learned something from this. And as they move forward in negotiations, there will be an advantage to having gone through everything that we've gone through to this point. So I'd like to thank you all for your service. I am truly sorry that I can't support the settlement at this time, but I truly don't feel the city can afford a settlement of this, of this size at this time, so I'm not going to be able to support it. Councilor Freeman Daniels. I just, um, I, uh, I just wanted to point out to the council uh, that I, I'm not going to be around much longer, but, um, and I have actually managed not to vote on very many, um, very many contracts, labor contracts, uh, due to uh, just the timing, I think, of them. But uh, this is a this is a new these are new waters for the council to be uh, to be scrutinizing a labor contract so seriously, and um, I'm. I, uh, I ran on a platform of scrutiny, and I and I uh, I do very much support it, and I look forward to the council in when the mayor comes forward in future years with contracts for the multiple bargaining units that uh, that um, that uh, this that work for the city that uh, the same level of scrutiny will be applied uh, regarding those as has been applied to this. Thank you, Council Labarge. You know, I've been saying this all week. We hear from the opposite side, and then we hear from our mayor. I just wish, as city councilors, we could be part of this negotiation, which we know we can't, so that we can actually hear what is occurring and what is verbally coming out of both sides. It becomes very difficult when you just get papers and you're looking at language we have to email either to um, our financial director or our mayor to get answers I, i'm just really heartbroken about all of this i do know tonight when i came in i was shocked not to see their fire hats on them i always thought they were their fire hats i see them in the ambulance i mean in the fire trucks they have them on it's like, then I'm told tonight by one of the firemen, no, they cannot wear their hats. I never knew that. So anyways, I'm really heartbroken about this because I've always, always supported the fire department. But because of the tremendous amount of calls that I have gotten, and I mean I have gotten, people are so upset seeing that 400 and four thousand dollars really upset and I have to say honestly and the override that just passed there was a big problem with that it has divided the city and then this big figure comes aboard which I know has nothing to do with the override but people are looking at all of this very very carefully so I want to apologize. I feel bad about this, but I, I feel we cannot support this. Um, I will take this opportunity then to weigh in to, uh, as, as I sense that debate is winding down. The, 
the challenges are obvious, the emotions are obvious. Part of our responsibility, uh, our, our responsibility is not just focused solely on the budget disposition, but it's to actually to honor the process, respect and facilitate the process. And the process that has been presented and the process that was applied was a fair and just process that this isn't for us to debate whether that process ultimately came up with a decision that was proper because that was already conceded going into the negotiations. That that both parties decided and deferred to the decision of the arbitration committee. If roles are reversed, if President Flynn has to go before and this decision strongly did not favor the FD, President Flynn would have to present to his membership a case for voting for it to approve and accept. How would we in turn feel if they rejected that negotiation? Would we be as troubled by the process as we were or would we be troubled by their rejection? It was hard to say. That's a but I just it's worth considering when we have this conversation. I choose my vote will reflect the the process by which Council Freeman Daniels and Council Carney had expressed and value that. Because that is the you know, we, we struggled with the, that a little tonight. We had a process. It was a public comment section. One member of the community decided they had something more important to say than anybody else and breached the process and protocol, the one, the rules that we we all adhere to and that we hope that everyone adheres, adheres to. So I am voting to honor the process. I will be voting yes and with the recognition of the futility of that gesture and I hope it isn't perceived as simply a gesture. Um, and anticipating the consequences of the vote which will require six in the majority to vote to approve and I don't hear it. I, if I do my math, I don't hear it or see it. I think that we are uh, we uh, we are left with without much juice behind what we say, but to tell the, the two parties to get back and you know come up with something better. <laughs> so I and when and how and this is to Councilor Carney's point. Do we determine what's better and what's not? And and I do and Council Freeman Daniels makes an excellent point. This is unprecedented. We do not apply this level of scrutiny to contracts. We should. That's not our job, actually. In fact, I'm thankful for that. Because I don't envy any of the participants in this process. And all the people whose whose hopes and dreams rely on ultimately a compromise in the decision between two two different parties. I don't I I would I I have nothing but the highest admiration for all participants, all of them. But the fact is is that when we weigh in to the point that we're coming in really late to the game and we're determining the fairness and justness of 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 a process and whether we can afford it or not, which is an important and critical point. In fact, I, I did charge the council to remember that that was our job, was to remember we just debate whether we can afford this or not. So I, I feel really uncomfortable if we're making these judgments based on the cursory amount of information that were provided with the decision that was written. And I, and I hope all the councilors had an opportunity to read it, at least to that extent. And our awareness of the context is pretty removed from the process, yet we hold all, we hold the final disposition in our hands. So I apologize as well, but I apologize to every party participating in this. Um, because it is my firm hope that we can do better. We have to. We have to do better than this. Any other discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll, please. No. Yes. Yes. 
Aye. Aye. No. 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 The motion fails. The money is not authorized for the transfer. Um, and that is the end of that item on the agenda. And we move on to the next item. You guys ought to be ashamed of yourself. Spend 100 grand. Do you think it's going to be less money next order, time? Order, please. Yeah. Order, please. Move approval. Uh, the, <laughs> you're moving approval on to the item two. Motion to move approval. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels is anticipating the next order up. I just, I, I guess I would ask the, I, um, but, yeah. given the first vote, I think I, I need to respectfully withdraw or ask the council to um, uh, postpone indefinitely that particular order um, because that order was contingent you know. on the, per, the passage of the first order. Correct. Um, so it, the two were a sequence because of the do you retroactive. Uh, yeah, Council moved to postpone indefinitely. Okay, the motion is to postpone indefinitely. Second. Second Seconded. <laughs> Seconded. Any discussion? Actually, no discussion. All those in favor of tabling the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That's not a roll call on that one, is it? Always. Not for table. No. Okay. It can be if you want. Mm -hmm. No. It's all right. It was, uh, by my count, it was. Just checking procedure. It was unanimous. So. Um, Mr. President, yes. is the, can the solicitor go off the clock now? <laughs> uh, is it the council's pleasure to dismiss the city solicitor? Yes. yes thank yes. you very much, Alan. I appreciate your time on this. Uh, next up, the city council, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkworth and the Commission on Disabilities and the city council to approve an expenditure from the Commission on Disabilities Fund established under Chapter 40. Section 22G and funded by handicap parking violations not to exceed $5,500. Appropriate. Okay. All right. It's moved and seconded. Any just further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'd like to suspend Rule 14. Is that the one? Uh, yes. So this is the second reading. Yes. There's been a motion to suspend Rule 14, which is the requirement to have a second reading in the next meeting. Move to approve. Is there a second on that? Second. Okay. All those in favor of, the, of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? All right. To the motion. Uh, any Move further? Second reading. <laughs> second. Aye. Second. No, I need a second. Second. All right. Uh, all those in favor and second reading, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next up is. This is the transfer of $61,500 from that point, 2013 unused earned uh, leave account to the newly created reserve fund. And there's also a request for two readings on this, so, but I'll Move accept the curve. motion. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, okay. The <coughs> clerk has asked me to slow down. Yes. <laughs> Don't, no, Mary. No, we can't possibly spend it. No. No, I've, that's fair. That's fair. And it is very hot. It is. Um, the motion has been made by Councilor Barge and seconded by Councilor Tacey to put it on the floor. So this is, I'm sorry, is this number four? This is number four. The transfer of $61,500 from FY 2013 unused earned leave account to the new created uh, reserve fund. Is there any discussion? This is not any new money. This is just <laughs> correct. That's it's how just it moving to another account. Absolutely. Correct. Yes. Just exactly. It's transferring to another. That's why it's called a uh, transfer. Oh. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Suspend rule fourteen. There's been a motion to suspend rules. Second. All those in favor of the suspension of rules? Aye. 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 Move second reading. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. How are we doing? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. <coughs> uh, 
Um, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, and that's the budgetary transfers, <coughs> the 2013 budgetary transfers that um, Council Murphy iterated for us in Finance Committee. It's uh, for a total of $45,211, and there's also a request for two readings on this. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Suspend Rule 13. There's been a motion second. Suspend rules and seconded by Councilor Adams. Any uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Move second reading. Second reading second is made. And seconded by Councilor LaBarge. All those in favor and second, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. All right. This is upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to uh, in introduce this. Move to late suspend file. late file rule. Second. On the second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 <coughs> all those abstentions. <coughs> Excuse me. This is upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee. Um, do you want me to read the order, or is everyone okay? We I would, I would uh, I move waive the reading. I move approval. There's been a motion to approve and the way and waive the reading. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Any discussion? Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, I see this as um, the creation of a recreational park that has access to the Connecticut River, which is a tremendous resource for Northampton. Um, it's leveraged a lot of money from outside sources and from private sources. We'll leverage it from the state. It's leverage it from private donors. Uh, this is going to be a tremendously valuable park for generations to come. Uh, I sincerely hope that we can get a unanimous approval on this. Uh, any further discussion? Um. Is this a roll call? No, this is not a roll. This is uh, no. This is authorizing. So, <coughs> all. Yeah, it's roll call. It is a roll call. Okay, it's called the roll. Although, by the time you get here. What's that? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, just for clear. A motion to put it on the floor and second it, please. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, I know we did. We can identify who who moved. Who. Oh, I moved it. You moved it and I'll second, second it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, and the council so it's on the floor. Thank you. Well, it, so it was. Actually. It was. I moved it before. It was. Yeah. It's just it's we we you know we we I, I just, just my bad. We are moving pretty fat at a pretty healthy clip here because we don't want to die here. Yes. Oh, and uh, so anyway, you all know my feeling about this, the grant money. I mean, I've made that very apparent. Yes. About what? We do. About the grant money that goes along with this whole project. And my reason for voting no is all about the grant money. I think it should be just distributed differently. So I, that, it's not going to be unanimous because I'm going to vote no. And it's got nothing to do with whether it's going to be a beautiful project or anything like that. It's just that somewhere along the line, somebody's got to do something to stop or to redirect grant money into things that don't have any strings attached. And so I, that's why I'll vote no. Can I ask where we are? It's on the, uh, uh, this is a this is a a a. a, a um, a, a level of reasoning that is being, that I do not understand. Um, we we can we can debate bad policy on the state level uh, or on the federal level, for for example. But uh, you don't see any other departments uh, failing to take advantage of grants that are available if they believe that it's in the best interests of the citizens of Northampton uh, to use those grants. I, I mean. It might be a better policy overall for the state to grant cities and towns more unrestricted free aid, but uh, they're not. 
they're granting, they, they use grants instead to encourage policy. And it's up to the city to agree or disagree with the state. Uh, and the city, in this case, I think, rightly agrees with the state that this is a valuable project. So thus, it is incomprehensible to me that we would not use grant money that's available. I do not understand. Someone who does not accept grant money for this project or votes against it does not want the project to happen. And so, uh, but just by the very reasoning I just outlined. So, so I would wish that anyone who votes against it would actually come out and say that they don't want the project to happen. When you have a grant that you're applying for, you're implicitly saying that you believe that it is uh, a good thing for you to win that grant and that uh, the, what the grant will pay for is a good thing. To reject it would be to say that what the grant pays for is a bad thing or a thing that you don't want. And uh, I, I hope that uh, we see the tremendous value in this, uh, in this project and uh, can see how we can accomplish it very easily with, us, with leveraging our uh, CPA funds. Thank you. Council of Yes. Um, I've supported this right from the beginning. I'm very happy to see that they have been working very tirelessly doing a lot of um, doing um, donations and I knew they were going to do that. Knowing the rowing crew, how hard they work, that they would help pitch in and make this happen. I'm happy that there was a good way of getting grants and I think sometimes grants are very valuable. Yes, grants are taxpayers' money. But this I believe in, I did from the beginning. It has nothing to do of constructing any boathouse or anything. That is going to be taken care of privately. And I am very happy to see that this is moving forward. Any other discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 No. Aye. Pass in first reading. We'll come up in our meeting in August for the second reading. Um, <clears throat> this is okay. Why am I? I'm off on the order. Yeah. No. No. I'm sorry. I skipped ahead again. Okay. This is upon the recommendation of uh, Mayor David Janarkowitz, and this is ordered, whereas uh, Mass General Law Chapter 40 S4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas M uh, MGL Chapter 40 S4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the City Council and the Mayor, and whereas the City of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities. Therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40 S 4A, the City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into the following intermunicipal agreements for FY14 and FY16 through to FY16. A service contract for the provision of shared services between the Town of Amherst and the City of Northampton agreement to share equally the services of the assistant sanitarian employed by Amherst and, pub and a, a public health nurse employed by Northampton. Therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40S 4A, the uh, City Council hereby authorizes the City of Northampton to enter into the following intermunicipal agreements for FY14. Contract with the Town of Williamsburg for building inspection and zoning enforcement services agreement to provide the Town of Williamsburg with these services for $31,000. A contract with the Town of Williamsburg for electrical inspection services agreement to provide the Town of Williamsburg with these services with fees for permits turned over to the City of Northampton. A contract with the towns of Amherst, Hadley, and East Hampton for municipal hearing office services. Agreement to provide a municipal hearing officer pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 148A, Section 2C. 
to hear complaints related to alleged violations of state building codes or the state fire codes. And then contract with the towns of Amherst, Chesterfield, Cummington, Hadley, Middlefield, Pelham, Williamsburg, Goshen, and Worthington to provide veteran services, uh, the veteran service officer services. Uh, agreement to provide these services to the various communities and assessments to individual towns per the agreement. And a contract with the Town of Amherst to provide on-site computer system and network maintenance for the police department's computer systems and the networking resources located at the police station, fire station, and public safety communication center. Accept a motion. Second. So move. Motion seconded. Second. Somebody second. Uh, Council Labarge seconded. Um, any discussion? Uh, the, does anyone want to talk to the mayor about this? Is everyone okay? We're all pretty aware of these standing contracts and that they serve our, it's a mutual aid contract essentially and it serves all of our best interests as we work regionally. So, Councilor Casey. It actually, <clears throat> it's a pretty, it's a pretty healthy cost saving measure for the city. Works out well for both, both communities. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Um, suspend Rule 14. Been there's motion. two readings been, on yes, this. you're right. Correct. Uh, there's been a motion to suspend rules. Is second. there a second? All those, uh, Council Freeman Daniels? Is there a reason for suspending the rules? Just because we're in the fiscal year and we want to get this? Yeah, we, we, um, we wanted to. Basically, because we're 10 days past the exactly, and, and we're still providing the services exactly. So, <laughs> um, and these are services that have been ongoing for many years, and so we wanted. It took us a while to get the signatures we needed from the other, particularly the towns um, that require select board signatures. So that's why it took us a little while to get them all, and we wanted to do them all at once. So that's the reason. Thank you. And again, all the funds for this are, are already part of the 2014 budget for our portion of it. This is on the suspension rules. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 I'll accept a motion for the second reading. So moved to approve. Um, motion's been made by Councilor Spector and seconded by Adams. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. This is, you heard um, Henry Ford speak to this first speaker that was uh, some hours ago in, in public comment this is the City Council this is an order of the City Council accept the stormwater ad hoc advisory task force report or SWAT <laughs> it's, it's, uh, and it, uh, it was presented and I'll accept uh, motion second it can, it's moved and second can we have the can we read what we're accepting <laughs> You want, yeah, well, this is essentially, <laughs> do you want me to read the entire report? Because no, no, just the, the, the order. The, the order is the City Council accept the attached report of the Stormwater Ad Hoc Advisory Task Force and further that the Board of Public Works draft and propose an ordinance based on this report. And the motions have been made in second to Councilor second. Daniels and the Councilor Spector. So this, this, is an or, this is an order to get an ex a, a member of the executive branch to do something. I'm not sure we can legally do that. We can accept the, we can, we can accept it. We can ask, we maybe can ask the Board of Public Works to draft ordinance, but I'm not sure about uh, accepting it and. That's, that's actually a good point. Uh, Councilor Spector. I'm gonna yield to the lawyer. Hello, the Councilor Adams. Well, I, I drafted the order too. I, I, you, you, I imagine you're right. I'm happy to change the language right now to something less, um, less of a command. But, but, the, but the, let me just explain the reason for the order. It's, it's that um, through this process, we've gotten to a point where the joint committee heard uh, this presentation. This was presented to us, the City Council Public Works Joint Conference Committee, on Monday. And um, it was made very clear to us prior to that and at that meeting that they wanted um, they want a very. They want a directive. They they want it. They want it to made very clear what we want us, what we want them to do, and um, and and we want them to, to take a shot at the first drafting of this. Um, but I, I I do I think that's a, I think that's a good point. I'm happy to change the language to reflect that because we, we we can't order the administration to do anything based on the separation of powers in our charter. So you want to amend this to certainly. request as opposed to an order. 
Yeah, we couldn't. No, I, I think we could just say that and further that the further city request, council yeah, the request. request. But request Got it. Further. All right. So if you could read the full uh, language so that the clerk can. Order that city council accept the attached report of the stormwater ad hoc advisory task force and further recommend that the Board of Public Works draft and propose an ordinance based on this report. Um, second. Second on that amendment. Okay. This is to the amended language. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay. Back to the original motion. Um, and Scott, Councilor Spector, you did want to speak to the I'll actually yield to yeah. Councilor Tacey. Hey, oh. Councilor Tacey. Yeah, we just want to, uh, I'm glad you guys picked that out. Um, I want to thank these, the members of this task force, um, uh, Rick Clark and Jim Dostel, uh, Dan Felton was the vice chair of the committee, Emery Ford was our chairman, he was uh, from uh, Ward 7, Alec Gieslin, Chris Hellman, um, Ruth McGrath, Megan Murphy Wolf, Robert Breckman, John Chenette, and David Teese. We had asked them to work, they never worked together. And uh, it was, the report is, is pretty specific and detailed. I mean, they spent a lot of time at this. And I want to thank Councilor Spector for moving it along. Um, you know, this, it's a tremendous amount of work, and these guys got together. And uh, the one thing I want to mention that really struck me at the meeting when they presented this to us was um, David Teese uh, talked about how they had difficulty starting off and, and getting on the same page, and more or less seemed as though almost it was like who was going to be the boss. And um, but he said when we finally all decided to check our egos at the door. Um, he said it turned the whole it turned the whole uh, task force right around, and progress went through. And if this is a huge report, uh, I'm still reading it. I've read it two times, and I and every time I read it, I seem to get some more out of it. So, um, and also uh, Ned Huntley and Jim Larilla, extremely instrumental um, in this. And I just want to. I would like to thank them for the whole city, but I can't do that. Whether you're on board with what this will end up being or costing you is irrelevant, but I just want to say that the report is fantastic. It's a nice job, and um, I can't thank that whole bunch enough. Um, kudos to the whole group. The Council Spector. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Gene, for thanking each of those members individually. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen a committee work as hard and come out with such good piece of work to help us. It's basically just something to help us, guide us, guide the DPW, the BPW, and the decision-making process. In fact, the chair of the committee, Emery Ford, at the beginning, and he's done this work, did a pricing out, which is really interesting. He said, what would this have cost if we had done this, you know, hired an outside group. We've hired outside consultants before, and I just want to say on this committee, there was a lot of professional expertise, basically donated their time to the city, brought that expertise to this report. And when Emery kind of went through and gave a very minimal amount, because he and I talked about it before, and I said, well, you can tone it down a little, but a minimal amount, this would have cost $100,000, absolutely basis, basic cost if we had asked some outside consulting firm to do this. And I think the piece of work that came out of this was tremendous. And the fact that they essentially reached consensus. If you read the report, there are some very minor places where there's disagreement. One last point, I just want to make sure everyone who's watching at home, by accepting the report, that doesn't mean we're accepting just the clarity of this, that the city council is saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're just accepting the report, meaning thank you very much for the report. Now we'll work on it. Now we'll take, we'll send it on. We'll eventually have votes on it. It doesn't mean we're going to agree with the content of what's in there. Uh, council of the Barge and Council. Thank you. Yeah. I've um, attended two meetings on the Stormwater Utility Task Force. And I know the first meeting I had gone to 
um, Counselor at Large, Jesse Adams, and Paul Spector in regards to step in because they're all brand new and they were put into a task that was not an easy one. So they both got together and showed and gave them guidance on how to go ahead and start moving. I have to say there was a lot of work put into this committee. I enjoyed attending three of the meetings and then it became very, very, very difficult for me because we had city council meetings on Thursday nights. So I didn't see very many residents throughout the city participating at these meetings. And that was a red flag for me because we're trying to get that information out to all the residents of how important it is for them to hear exactly what's occurring. But anyways, I wanna thank Ruth McGrath. Um, I was asked by Paul to find a female, which I did. She says, oh, what am I getting into? And she did very, very well. And I have to thank David Teese, um, also on my award, who was um, nominated by the mayor. He had great concerns of also total communication being given to the residents. They all worked out fine. I want to thank every one of the members to doing such a great job. And I'm even getting calls from people saying that they're hoping that there is plenty of open public sessions on this because it is very detrimental and it's taxpayers' money. So. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Jesse, too, for guiding. Councilor Adams. And, and also, just on that point of inspectors, since we began last fall with our just general, our general discussions of the issue, trying to raise awareness before the committee was formed, since, since that point, we've been very conscious about public outreach and process. And um, just because this is being referred out, um, this is the beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. so there's going to be a lot of public out outreach going forward. We're, we're very aware of that. And actually, they make some good recommendations in the report about the types of outreach we can do, which is really helpful and we should take seriously. But there will be a lot more public outreach going forward. Uh, Councilor Tracy? Well, yeah, when I was, I was first approached for looking for somebody uh, in my ward, I remember the focused involvement that Emory Ford had on the Bean Allard Task Force and the, the farm sale. And so, his name immediately uh, came to mind and um, did an excellent job. He's just um, can't say enough about the whole bunch. But I want to reiterate what has been said here about outreach. When we had our first meeting at the JFK community room, other than elected officials, there were only eight members of the public. And this is huge. This is going to. This is something that will affect every property owner in the city. And so the outreach. Is, the outreach is going to be very, very important. And people really are going to have to pay attention. They're going to have to. They're going to have to get educated, educate themselves on it by coming to these meetings that we have. Thank you. That's true. Councilor Freeman Daniels. <coughs> uh, I. Um, this is a difficult vote for me because. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to read the report, and uh, I know that it contains two, two rec recommendations, and um, it's unclear to me what we're actually asking the Board of Public Works to uh, to assemble. Ordinance on both, or are they going to pick their pick the one there that they find is more more appealing? And um, it's difficult for me to. Uh, to ask them to pick one without having looked at both recommendations. Uh, I think, I actually, I, I know that I think the report was sent to me, but I, I'm sorry, I just, it was completed on Monday, I just haven't had a time to read it, so it, uh, it's a difficult vote for me to uh, to vote yes on. Okay, uh, Councilor Spector? Yeah, I, I understand that, and <clears throat> you'll get plenty of chance to read the report down the road. This, this has been a process that three of us have been involved in for quite a while, I think over a year now, and we tried to, f and it's been a, a difficult, how do we proceed step by step? So I think you raised a, a good point, 
what the both the BPW and the DPW has asked all along is for guidance on this. How do we do this? Because this is a, it's not only a technical problem, because in some ways they could have just done this, voted on it and done it. That didn't seem to us, who serve on the Joint Committee, as a good way to go, because this seems as much a political question as a technical question. So we have tried to join together, which is part of, I think, what you're bringing up. It's a difficult you know, juggling act here. Join together to say we all recognize this is an educational process, it's a political process, and it's a technical process. So we're at the stage where we felt this was the time to refer it back to them, that they could, there's really more than just the two choices. They may actually refine this in other ways as well, because they're going to be, they're the ones who have the expertise now, even though they gave a lot of testimony and provided a lot of material at the ad hoc committee. Now they go back and they're going to look at this and they're going to analyze maybe even more than just what are the two choices. And I think in some ways it's beyond the scope of our discussion, even if we read the report. We need that, we need a committee with that kind of expertise to have hash out those arguments. If we talked about earlier that we'd be here at one in the morning hashing out the arbitration decision. We'd be here for days and days and days talking about the various technical structures here. And there were only a few members of this committee that actually had that kind of expertise as well. Um, and so that's why you had two different answers coming out of it. Um, I, I, I understand your frustration, though. I, I, that is the best answer I can give you as to why I would encourage you to vote to you, refer it out. If I may, I, you know, historically, the way this evolved, and in fact, actually, Councilor Spector is absolutely right. <clears throat> this is part of an ongoing process to try. You know, it's it is it, not been commonplace the establishment of a fee. Unfortunately, uh, uh, usually takes place without much by your leave by the community and the public and, and the council. The council votes it yay or nay. But, uh, and then consequently the frustration that comes from that. <coughs> the interest here, uh, it was Councilor Tacey and Councilor Adams and Councilor Spector uh, emphasized that they, in their processes being in the conference committee, it was, it was evident to them that there was a, there were mandated uh, expenditures that were going to have to be s subsidized. There were critical elements just for the simple maintenance and protection of this community from the stormwater management system, and they were emphasizing that they were very concerned with, one, they recognized and acknowledged that there was a necessity to actually subsidize this, and we can no longer sustain that out of the general fund, and I think Councilor Tacey is the one who emphasized that. We can't continue to draw that out of the general fund to maintain these that we have to put something into effect. And the concept of, uh, uh, of, of an ad hoc advisory committee representing facets of the community, and everyone recalls <coughs> the public meetings as Councilor Tacey referred to, which we would prefer that were better attended. And clearly, we have to figure out and calculate how we're going to do that better, how we're going to do outreach better, but there, and recognize that we're not going to get everyone, and we'll hear from them when, when and if the, the bills come. But the to the uh, this report does two things it acknowledges the need for a funding system that we need to fund these mandates and we need to fund the maintenance and security of the stormwater management system and then it also says it offers a rather broad variety of things you can actually a poo poo platter if you will choices of options and how that funding would be applied, but they make two recommendations about the most efficacious and fair way to to assign it. So I, I think to Councilor Spector's point that um, if we accept the report as a report and or accept essentially accept the good work that has been put into this, it doesn't mean you're um, committing to the content of the report. It, it is acknowledging the work of the ad hoc committee and uh, and using as a reference tool, which I think is the concern that Councilor Freeman Daniels mentions, given based on the amended language, we're actually charging the Board of Public Works, uh, and by extension the Conference Committee, to uh, develop an ordinance based on the recommendations from this report. So uh, I understand your reticence and acknowledge it. That's 
Councilor Tacey. Yeah, <clears throat> this isn't something, this is not something new. This has been going on for decades. We have been funding stormwater with like about $250,000 a year or some such number as that, and it's, it's, it's nowhere near enough. And I remember in our support for the Northampton High School uh, renovation, the drainage behind the high school had to be addressed. We were dumping huge pipes into small pipes, and it just wasn't working. Um, so even then, um, we knew we were going to have to do something with stormwater because we had no money. That project went forward without doing the lower 40, and then it had to get done. So anyway, and I would just like to reiterate that we are only accepting the report, period. They take no ownership. This committee, task force, takes no ownership of any budget. And they made that perfectly <coughs> clear to us at the meeting. No ownership of the of the money, or how we go about charging. But they did. They made some tremendous recommendations here, and uh, excellent, outstanding job. I, I believe Mr. Teese's letter is in, contained in the report, yes. and I recommend it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just not so much for the report as much, which was great, but his description of his coming to terms with municipal process his initial resistance and his, his eventual uh, deep and uh, admiration and respect for the people and the process. And uh, if you, if you are right, uh, Council Murphy has not spoken yet. Now speaking of municipal process, we've just taken 20 minutes to accept a report. At this rate, we'll be sending out for breakfast before we get out of here. <laughs> I, like to take a I don't know if we'll call that a notes. call in question, but Councilor Murphy yeah. dance. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, minutes. My point here is, um, not a, not against accepting the report, but actually, it's against doing anything. It's against refraining from doing anything further with it. Uh, I believe that the council should um, should make a more pointed rec uh, request of the board of public works in uh, recommending a particular one of the particular uh, suggested routes for. Uh, for the process for the um, for them to create ordinance because um, because I believe that the, this is a council committee and they're giving us a report and they're giving us two options and we're, we're failing to take we're, we're actually just passing it along so in effect the Board of Public Works will take will, will create the option they will take one of the two that has been recommended and make an ordinance out of make a set of proposed ordinances out of it and I think that should be our our duty and job um, and uh, not the not the job of the board and uh, I believe that um, the reasoning I think there's good reasoning for accepting this and getting it going because we're we're late we're behind um, but it's gonna make it, it that we're behind we're behind every single way every way you go I, the board of public works creates a set of ordinances we're gonna be behind if we tell them that we don't like them so we're we're going down a path that it's a one-way path, and uh, I think we should take the month of uh, July until the next meeting and um, leave open the possibility that we could amend this this uh, request. That uh, and that the request has a specific recommendation that the uh, Board of Public Works create a um, set of ordinances around one of the recommendations in the uh, in the report. Councilor uh, Speck. I recommend we call the question. Question. Second. Uh, let me be clear on something. W were you actually moving to postpone? Well, this is first reading, right? So yeah. it, the, we won't, the order is going to be done on August 15th. I just want to make sure I didn't ignore a motion. No, I, my, my I was saying is I hope that the council's open to amendment at the next meeting. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions called? All those in favor of accepting the report, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Move to suspend two readings rule. I abstain, by the way. Uh, an abstention on the first vote, and now there's a motion to suspend rules. Is there a second? Second. 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 Uh, the discussion to the suspension of rules. The Board of Public Works really wants this thing, and Terry Colhane made that clear to us, and they are actually eager for it, and I don't see any point in, I mean, having the second reading when we know they want it. Further, the task force has made it, I think, relatively clear that they do have a model in mind uh, that they, they want to pursue. But um, I, don't, I don't see any reason for this council 
to to pick the model at this point. For one, we can attend their public meetings that they're going to have and express our opinions to them and work openly and publicly with them. Two, once they draft it, it's going to come to us. So if we don't like the model they've chosen, we can amend it. If we don't like the credit they've chosen, the, the credit scheme, or if they don't like the cap or anything else, we can do all that here, and we can refer it back out to our own committees. So I don't see that as at all necessary. I think we should let them get to it now as they want to. Thank you. Councilor Freeman Dane. I just want to reiterate what I said before we just we were about to suspend rules. Uh, so say any, any any I'll just say it again. Anything that we anything we say publicly, we can also say through the council. I don't see why we have to rush to refer this. And the every argument for rushing to give it to the Board of Public Works is going to be is is, is the same argument about rushing to approve it. Uh, when the Board of Public Works comes back to us. If we don't like the model that they're suggesting, the, the, which, the whichever one they choose to write an ordinance for, the same arguments will be given to us then that are right now, which is, well, we have to get this underway. We have obligations to fulfill. You can't go, if you send it back to the board with the asking them to do the other model, we've just wasted all this time. Let's get it right the first time. We have three weeks, four, excuse me, about four weeks to read the report and the council could be so inclined, I think it should. I think we're shirking responsibility when we have a committee that is one of our committees that makes a recommendation of two separate models and we, we refer it without giving the board the very thing that they want, which is a recommendation on which model to, that we want to, to see. Council Specter, to the motion of the... Uh, I would be pulling my hair out if I had more hair. Councilor. We are doing a new process here, which is this didn't even need to come to the city council. We are trying to get as much input as we possibly can. Now I wish you had read the report, because the issue at hand, first of all, the two models that you're focusing on is not really, as Councillor Tacey said, really the committee voted seven to two. So they could have just as easily, we suggested to them, they include both models. They almost were just gonna give the one model because the vote was seven to two. The models themselves, the reason why, is because they need a little more tweaking. The tweaking isn't about what the models cost. The tweaking is about you can read the, this report for a long time and not understand this, because I don't, we, but it's about all kinds of water flows and pervious things, and there are charts in there, and you better have a, a, a degree in engineering. The, that is the work of the Board of Public Works and the BPW to go over this. But I really think it is extremely frustrating right now that we don't just move this along. We have been waiting now. So I don't see what another month would be. I don't know how many times we said, I don't know what another month would be. Getting the committee started. Well, it's not so bad. It's two more months, two more months. Two mo it's been over a year, well over a year since we wanted to get this thing moving. And now it's moving. And another month does mean a lot here. And they've even broken it down into different models, like common common area, um, uh, municipal, recreation. They broke it all down. It's, it's pretty detailed. Um, and the, the hydraulic acreage was one and e equivalent residential use, or unit rather. Um, and their preferred one was the hydraulic acreage. So I don't know. I, it, by accepting this report, I think uh, We've done everybody a great service. Just, I, I don't know what else to say about uh, it. The, the, mo the, the motion that's being debated is a suspension of rules. So if you'll speak to the urgency and the need and the necessity or the lack of necessity for the suspension of rules. So is that what you were going to speak to, Councilor Luarch? Okay. Ron? No, no, no. No, oh, I thought you raised it. No, okay. Can I just say one more thing about the timing issue? It is the urgency. Okay. We were hoping way back that this would actually have been done by July 1st because if we put something in place we were hoping that all of this which was totally unrealistic on our part that it could be put in place so that it could be in the, the financial piece could be put in place as part of the budget then we're talking about well hopefully it can be put in place by January 1st for that budget now we're saying that may not be realistic but those are the kind of urgencies that as we push things back a month and then we lose a deadline of six months or a year when we have to come through. This has been an issue been on this committee now for eight years. We've been talking about it for eight years. We've been talking about the need for eight years. It's time to move this. 
don't make me regret that we just didn't say, you know what, BPW, you handle it. We'll be out of it. Go ahead and come up with it. All right, the motion is to suspend rules for a second reading. All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. So two nays. Any abstentions? I'm the second. Uh, all right. The I'll accept a motion to put it on the floor. So moved. Second. second. <laughs> uh, now to the motion on second reading, Councillor. I'm not sure what else I can say other than, other than, if it's if it's taken this long, the same calls for urgency will be on our backs in however many months it takes for the Board of Public Works to draft these ordinances. I do not believe that we will be able to give the alternatives proper consideration. I think that we should read the report and possibly amend it for next month so that um, we can give the board more direction. Call the question. Second that. Call the question for the second reading. Uh, all those in favor in second reading, please say aye. 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 Oh. Nay. Minority reconsideration. Oh, boy, I haven't heard oh. <laughs> There has been a call for minority reconsideration. We are now experiencing the full breadth and depth of the charter. Thank you. You know my, my reasoning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. uh, there's been a call for minority reconsideration. Councilor Adams, can you explain what? I, certainly. Any member voting with the min minority may move a reconsideration to be acted upon at the next meeting. Minority reconsideration shall have priority over majority reconsideration. Minority reconsideration shall be used to allow time for submissions of new or additional information. Councilor, because you haven't had the opportunity to read it doesn't mean we haven't, this is new or additional information. The new and additional information which this would allow for would be a particular amendment or recommendation from this council regarding one of the structures that has been recommended. I see that no one here is willing to offer that, but I do believe that there will be new, inf there could easily be new information. I ask a ruling from the president. That's a request for a new measure, Councillor, not new information. We have it's the information amendment. in front of us. It is amendment, though, and I actually would rule in favor of that. And, and if I may speak to my, my two votes on this point. Um, I understand the urgency, but this is not the tipping point. This is not the tipping point. There is no deadline. And in fact, part of what we were doing, the very purpose of this was to have a clear, accessible process that was open. And any, and my concern, is anything that looks to the contrary is to our detriment to our objective. Councilor, I would like to know what the discussion would be at the next meeting. If we say we'll do this at the next meeting, what is it we are going to then discuss? Are Counselor, we going to have... Is this a question to me? Well, it's actually a question to Councillor Daniels or to you, either one. What would the discussion focus around at the next meeting? What kind of, who do we invite to come to that meeting? Do we begin to have a six-hour meeting or multiple meetings about this report? I'd like to know how, give me the it's, description well, of what it well, looks like. Well, in that... That would be unique because we don't often anticipate what would be the the, the, the conversation in, in on debating issues. We have an some issues. idea. We have some idea of who would come to the well, meeting. I think who would add information. If you allow me. Yes. I think uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels' point is that, and possibly Councilor Freeman Daniels might draft an amendment or solicit some more information or have, uh, and and that may be presented to us at the next meeting. I wish now so. I would ask. I would ask, what is the failure? What happens adversely by, post, by extending this to the next meeting? And I think that's the critical feature, and that's one of the reasons that we have two readings. What fails? What deadline is crushed? What, what, what uh, solution fails? Councilor, this is very different than two readings. We are not passing on any practical thing. We are not passing anything. So I would ask you, what is we the... We are passing it, so that's why we voted. We're sending something on with a request that they put in an ordinance form. We are going to have multiple times. This is not like your traditional two readings. Absolutely. This is, we are not passing an ordinance here. I, I don't see the connection between the two, the analogy between the two, because there is going to be, and the whole thing of 
you know, what's the urgency here? I would put it another way when I'm asking, what is it we are going to, what is the topic that we are going to discuss next time in this body? Councilor Carney. Uh, um, I would support the minority consideration and um, just out of respect for the request by the councilor. And I don't see, I really don't see any harm in it. I have a point of information. Uh, point of information. I, I, I want to know, for, for, for minority reconsideration to be valid, there must be new or additional information. So I would like to know what the new or additional information is that makes this valid. Please, somebody inform me. Councilor from Daniels, direct to you. So the question about the question about what we're doing here is it was given actually very early on in this in this debate, which is that we're giving the Board of Public Works direction regarding what to do. They, that's what they wanted. So when you pass on a report which has multiple options and you fail to give them multiple options, that is a lack of information. That's a lack of direction. That is the thing which we will in, which we may be able to include in this order by the time the second vote happens. That is the direction that the board is asking for, and we are not giving to them. I do not understand. I don't understand the opposite. I don't understand what the rush is if they're asking for us for a direction, and they're mul they they want m they want the council to give them some to ask them to create ordinance around a proposal, and there are multiple proposals. We need to send them better direction. That's what will emerge. Can I ask for, I, can I respond? Let me just say that in the interest of procedure and also the late hour and the temperature, I've actually ruled already on this. And if there's a challenge to the rule, if there's a challenge to the ruling, then maybe that's the next step. Well, I, I, I like to, I'd still like, I mean, lack of information is not new or additional information. So my question wasn't answered. I'd still like to know what the new or additional information is that is, that is mandated in order for this rule to be valid. I need to know that. That answer was not questioned. Please, somebody succinctly well, answer that. Well, if I may, it is hard to anticipate what the new information would be in the absence of that information. Then it would not be new. It would be able to be provided now, wouldn't it? Well, then the rule might as well not exist. I mean. Well, no, we can no, need no, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm I will, I'd like to respond to that. The new information is indeed additional direction to the Board of Public Works. That's the new information. The new information is what will come up from the report. That, that the report is open-ended. The new information is closing one of those options. All right. The rulings we made, um, we, the minority consideration stands unless challenged, and we should move on. Um, I would also, uh, is it challenged? Okay. The, um, we, <laughs> we have people sitting here in the audience right now. Uh, we have a number of staff, and relative to the zoning issue, there's also folks from Middle Street here. I would la I'd like to request the permission of the council to move the zoning issue up to the next item, uh, and, then, uh, and then after that, Middle Street, if, if, with the council's permission. They have, you have permission. You can just Everyone okay it. with that? Okay. So we'll move on to the... the Table of use since it's only, uh, and uh, let's see, we got items 9 and, and 11. 10 and 11, thank you. And 12, I'm sorry, yes, yes. Um, uh, Wayne Fiden has been recognized already, so he's uh, Do we need to, uh, a motion to uh, extend the hour? It looks that way. Uh, a move we uh, we're at 10. We still got 40. Okay. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. I'm okay. sorry. I, so, my eyes. I thought it said 5 2. Um, uh, the, um, a motion's been made. For, first of all, let's deal with this. Right, so Has there been a, a like I accept a motion on the items 9 through um, 12. So moved. A second. A second. Okay. Now, uh, would you please uh, consider recognizing Carolyn Mish from the planning office? Move to recognize. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have a few. We got gum? Oh. <laughs> Do you bring it up? <laughs> Hmm. Put in the USB port. Shower. Except the motion is 
Um, you guys. No, second, Carolyn. Um, there, before we proceed with uh, uh, counselors, I would appreciate your attention on this, please. Counselors? Thank you. Yes. Um, there was some earlier discussion about continuing. I think in the interest of saving, if, if that is the council's pleasure of continuing this even further, I'd like to hear that now before we make everyone yes. jump I move that we continue but past the 11 we, uh, and I second order, that. I'd like to understand what continuation means in terms of the process because I understand that there's a de there are some deadlines. So I'd like to understand sure. just the information we about what it would mean if we continue it. No, I mean continue second. past the hour of 11. Is that what you're asking? No. no. Oh. He was asking about these I questions. Know, I know you're anxious to do that, Council. So could we do that first <laughs> before? So, Councilor, before we That's what I say that, I, I understand your need to say if we're going to continue it, that we're not getting into the meat of it, but if I could understand and if other counselors, what would it mean if we uh, do that's continue That's a it? fair question. Okay. Uh, and, Wayne, you're still recognized as well. If you want to speak to this question, if there is a motion from this floor, it's not yet, uh, to uh, continue this discussion either uh, to the next meeting or possibly beyond, what are the what are the consequences and I'll well about do you have an answer to that yes no. actually I think September 11th was our drop that date to deal with this based on ordinance closed its public hearing I think which was a June, June 11th? 10th June 10th okay so we have to deal with this by our first by the end of our first meeting in September to make the 90 days is that September 5th is Rosh Hashanah so I don't know if you meet on that night or not Mm -hmm. uh, we'd need two, two readings. September 5th. September 5th. Yeah, we have to be done by the 10th of September then, I think. Right, but that's, yeah, your regular scheduled meeting would be the 5th, which is the holiday. And we'd need the two readings, Are we right? scheduled to meet? Well, we'd have to. It, they'd have to, both readings would need to have been. We're scheduled to meet that, that evening. <clears throat> but I don't know if there'll be a full complement of counselors. Right. Right. Pamela. Mm-hmm. Um, and Which, um, but it obviously leaves the August meeting right. available. Right. Okay. What's the council's pleasure here? The, the, the second, can I ask one more information question? Would would it? I know we want to continue. That do we? Are there any of these that we could tease out of these three that we would not want to continue this evening? I'm just raising that as a question. Are there any one of these that we would say we're ready to discuss these and move move one of them forward, two of them forward? Um, they, Council Murphy, you want to speak to that? Oh, yeah. Uh, they sort of all happen better as a group. And I will make the motion that we continue this until our August meeting. Only, hopefully, we won't have another major issue like a contract popping up and we can actually devote a serious portion of our meeting to this because this is really meaningful stuff. Is this, is this? Can I suggest that we just refer it back to ordinance? Because I think the tax issue is enough to study in a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I know that. <laughs> oh, the, the only thing that I want to point out is, if, if we, what happens if we don't deal with it by the 10th is that ordinance needs to hold another public hearing, and then it's alive again for 90 days. So, you know, it's, it okay. doesn't go away forever. We could do another public hearing and then have to the end of the term to deal with it. Not that I'm encouraging well, we do that unless you want to. Can I just respond to that real quickly? The only reason is um, I'm seeing that uh, I saw a couple hours ago that, or more than a couple hours ago, that Councillor Adams had some uh, suggestions, and it, it might be it might be that you have to have a hearing anyway. Uh, so maybe better to refer to ordinance and discuss the amendment, discuss the tax issues, have open I the hearing, close the hearing. Didn't say that. I didn't think. I don't think I got a second for my thing. So if you want to. My motion. So if you want to, I, I interrupted you. That's why you didn't get a second. I'm sure you would have Well, if you want to recommend to go back to ordinance, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, I move. I move that we refer this to this ordinance. This is a motion to refer to ordinance. Is there a second? Oh, I'll, I'll second it for the purpose of discussion. I, I um, well, what does that do for the process? Well, um, it's still within. You know, if ordinance doesn't deal with it until after September. I mean, they could create a new public hearing and do new, right. new advertising, but if 
I don't know when ordinance meeting is. It the meeting in second, second, second Monday, Monday in August, and we August could just 20. post that as a public hearing again, couldn't we? And yeah, and do our thing and have another public yeah. hearing, and then buy another 90 days. And right. I would support that. Also, just mm -hmm. for guidance, I have an amendment There's, which I don't have to discuss tonight, but it's it's. You um, could do that in ordinance, right? Okay, that, that's what I'm asking for. Thank you. And I'm sorry, but and Joan. I'm sorry to you as well. Thank you very much for taking the time to come. And um, the uh, opportunity to discuss the, the, the several critical issues relative to assessment and the issues uh, the uh, Councilor Adams amendment, which I have not, I, I've seen it, but I haven't read it. I see that it exists and it's got lines on it, but I don't know, <laughs> I don't know beyond that. Council Murphy. Well, just a clarification. Are we just sending the table of use changes back and are we going to deal with the more than one structure or are we sending that one back to oh. your, the maker of the motion? Well, they, weren't they all moved as They're a group? All moved together. Yes. Do we want to separate, we separate If someone wants to separate them out. Why? I mean, I can understand the Why? three table of use ones going. It seems uh, like they're all part of a package. Here. This is put it in. I mean, I think it's part of a package, right? Yeah, so. send them <clears throat> All right. The motion's been made and seconded to refer this back to ordinance. Is there any further discussion on that point? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Wayne, Carolyn, Joan, I'm really sorry that uh, if there's any consolation, we're hotter and have been here longer. <laughs> so, okay, and you get to go home. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, next, uh, and I extend the same apologies to the folks who were waiting for the disposition of the Middle Street discussion. Um, uh, Council Murphy has requested this. Be, this was a tabled originally, and Council Murphy has requested that it be tabled to for discussion. And let's see. Thank you. And this is. Um, this is number eight on the agenda. Councilors, number eight. Yes. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission. This is an ordinance, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended to the revising section 312-103-2, uh, chapter two of said code, providing that no parking certain times uh, be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and the City Council assembled as follows. <clears throat> Add uh, on the side from Middle Street Westerly to <coughs> Chestnut Street North, uh, uh, from Middle Street Westerly, Chestnut Street Northerly to 632 feet on the westerly side of Middle Street, a two hour parking from 1 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Is there no, a motion? No, it was 8 a.m. It was 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm sorry, 8 a.m. Yeah. Sorry. Get a little punchy then, scared you, didn't I? Yeah, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., sorry. Uh, yeah, the wheels are coming off the wagon. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. And a second. And a second. All right, discussion, Council Murphy. Can I uh, set the stage for this? This is, this is actually reaching the stage of being a saga. This, this was carried over from the last session of the Council. Um, the neighbors originally brought this problem to my attention. We poll the neighbors, and that's why there's a distance from Chestnut Street, because the further you get from Chestnut Street, the less interested the neighbors become, because the problem doesn't manifest itself down at the other end of the street. So out of respect for those neighbors, we did not include them, because they don't have a problem, at least not as of this point. Okay. And the problem has been discussed and discussed and discussed. This street is on residential, but it's near a commercial zone. All of the commercial streets around here have one hour parking. This street has no regulation, so it collects all the parking um, that the one-hour areas don't. Now, the neighbors didn't ask for residential-only parking, and they didn't ask for the one hour the commercial streets have. They said two hours is fine, two hours is plenty of time for somebody to go see the doctor and come back at their car, go home. And that works for them. So they, they don't want to make it more restrictive. This is fine. Now, to test this out, we did a 120-day test of this, the signs were put up and the neighbors liked the results. The doctors didn't like the results because they changed their habits on the street. Um, but 
it really provided relief to the neighbors. They liked it, and they want to reactivate it. Now, we did at one point think we might get DPW to paint lines on the street to give that a try. They're not going to do that. They said they would only do that if, in fact, we react the or put the ordinance in place, then they'll go paint it. Well, now, why scary. they said that, I don't know, but that's that has promised me. If you act, enact the ordinance, we will go paint the streets, but if you don't enact the ordinance, we won't. We'll go pull up the signs and see you by. So here we find ourselves back here, approaching four years later, after having tested it for 120 days. The neighbors still say it helps us. We live here. We don't want to kick out commercial parking entirely, but we want to have some mitigation to our misery here would you please do this so it's back here and on behalf of the residents i would like your support for it support for what? Uh, i know that um one option that folks have spoken about that seems to be that suggested as one that might alleviate the problem is the presence of marked lines and so it's hard for me to understand why the Department of Public Works will only put in those lines if there's a two-hour if there's a two-hour parking limit. Um, that doesn't seem to give many options at all for those who would support. I, I think what we had asked for was let's see how it will work with just the presence of lines. Mm -hmm. That was six months ago. Six. We at least three months ago. Nine months ago. Thank you. So uh, I'm, I'm, um, you know, I, I don't understand why. I know that, and I appreciate that Councilor Murphy has asked, but I don't know what is required to, um, whether it's an ordinance or whether it's an order. And I'll ask for a transportation and park That's member. A, is that a, I can speak directly <laughs> to that. Question that. Thank you. All right. Uh, just to inter just to interrupt the flow of speaking, uh, I think that um, we do have some. There is some uh, precedent here where we can um, we can pass a we have a we have an ordinance that allows for a temporary uh, arrangement of parking and uh, traffic, which is no more than I think 100 either 90 or 120 120 days, days which we could pass as an order, uh, and that would it would order the creation the if we said we want we want lines on the street if we said we want painted flowers on the street you know I mean obviously we wouldn't say that but we could it, it could be an experiment it could be an alternative uh, that, that that would be an order that we could introduce um, if you, if you yes. wouldn't mind, uh, Council Labarge thank you my question Councillor Murphy it's been I think over six months and were you told at all from the Board of Public Works that you needed to put yes. in an ordinance? So, actually, I, I asked that? the mayor, and he said, "I'll see if I can get them to paint the lines." Mr. Huntley specifically told me no lines unless there's an ordinance. Now, I suppose, in the spirit of Councillor uh, Freeman Daniels's feeling, we could do another 120-day temporary one, in which case we'd then have our ordinance, which could get our lines painted and could do our test. But it does not, sooner or later, these people are going to jump out the damn window. <laughs> it's been almost four years here, you know. <laughs> but I, 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 it's been fun. Excuse, but, excuse me, I'm what? sorry, I can't, can't let you talk from the gallery. I uh, thought the reason that the lines didn't get painted was because the weather got bad. Yeah. Well, no, so that, that's why in February we gave them until July, but in the meantime, I've been told no lines. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we postponed it in February because you couldn't paint lines in February, but. And then it was raining too much and it was too wet. No, they just said no, no not unless you have an ordinance. We're not going no, to the president of painting ordinance. lines on residential streets unless there's an ordinance. Council Freeman Day. Uh, if I might suggest a um, a possibility here, it seems that the uh, it seems that the administration is unwilling to try this um, hybrid solution, which is uh, admittedly not what uh, the residents of Middle Street want, um, but uh, is I think something the council is more favorable towards easing into is uh, is that we could pass a temporary order, uh, an order for an order pursuant to our ordinance for a temporary uh, parking arrangement, and uh, the, that particular order wouldn't have anything to do with two-hour parking; it would just be mandating lines 
uh, within three feet of the of driveways and so on. The similar, the lines painted on the curbs, but the lines would extend into the street to allow for greater visibility. Parking spots. Right. right. Well, it would be yeah, basically, uh, and we can we can write that however we need to. Um, the reason I don't think it's, I mean, there's a, there's a difference between experiments and precedent setting. Um, there are clearly probably um, at least at least a dozen streets on in my ward that uh, have a, have a similar problem. The problem is you can't point at a particular uh, business that's the responsible, but they have a similar problem, and. Um, if a cheap fix like lines would would do it, then um, but then that would be something wonderful. But if if it doesn't do it, then I'd like to know. And I think that the there's a difference, as I said, between a precedent and an experiment. I think this is a worthy experiment. Uh, so I would like to um, to uh, I'd like to propose that the council actually uh, vote against this ordinance w without prejudice. Uh, and then at the next meeting, um, have I can I'll even work with you, Councilor Murphy, if you'd like to prepare an, a temporary uh, order, and that that will that presumably should mandate the, uh, the that the Department of Public Works put lines on the uh, parking spaces on the streets. Is that a motion? Uh, no, because we're the mo the f on the floor. It's to pr approve. So we're addressing. So uh, the other up. And the other option is to once again continue this until we try finally the uh, the lines approach. Mm -hmm. Well, this this you know my my big concern is that we get this straightened out before we get into winter again because the snow banks exacerbate this problem when the street gets narrow. True. So I'm perfect you know because we still have some more time here and and. It's got to end before the session does because this will be its sex second session for something that seemed relatively simple when we started. So um, I'm That's prepared true. to withdraw the motion until August and, and, and continue this till our August meeting to allow the chair of, because it was the last chair of transportation that started this. That's how long it's been around. So we, yeah, we, you come back, we'll work on a suggestion and bring it back next month. And uh, But it's got to end sometime. I so I'll withdraw the motion. And, and suggest we continue it until next meeting. Motion is withdrawn. What's the process after the temporary? Uh, we will, um, uh, I, I'll put it on the agenda for the Transportation Parking Commission meeting next week, and uh, the, it will be a temporary order. Um, it will be an order for a temporary arrangement of, uh, of, of parking, and it will come up to the council for a vote pursuant to our ordinance. We did one similar for uh, for um, Woodlawn, uh, uh, Jackson, Jackson, uh, and uh, Prospect, right? But what I'm wondering is, how long does a temporary period last, and what happens after? It's 120 days, and um, I think it's 120, yeah, if it's, I'm if I'm not mistaken. That's what we did the last time. Okay, well, it's 120 days, and it's a little less permanent than uh, than those big than the signs they put up there, which are very permanent. But it's 120 days from the installation. So we're um, from the where as soon as the DPW, the DPW then would then be required to, under the ordinance to paint the lines because it's an order pursuant to an ordinance. No, I understand that, but, okay, but, but after that period, under 20 days. how would we make it permanent if we wanted it permanent? We would just change the ordinance. Just draft a permanent ordinance? Yeah, and that would be, I think, maybe the first ordinance of the city that, w that would relate to residential uh, parking spaces on residential streets. And you're sure that that temporary order allows us to do this type of thing? I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. I can check the, I'll check the ordinance. Mm -hmm. Councilor Murphy. And certainly this ordinance could live on to the end of the session. So you could, it could be another ordinance on a temporary basis. Mm -hmm. This one is still out there. So if we like it, we just bring this one back and pass it. And then the status quo remains. Okay. With, with the stripes. The, the motion's withdrawn, so further debate's not necessary. And now Council move Martin, we uh, extend the hour. There we go. Second. Is second? And there's a, there's a motion and a second to extend uh, beyond our usually scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. I think we know how this is going to break out, but all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Nay. 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 Three nays. Oh. Four. Nope. Four. I counted three. Four to three. Three nays. Provided the president voted yes. The president did vote yes. Mary, would you like Five to vote? Five to three. 
Um, we don't ask That's, for your vote wait, because, because <laughs> Mr. Mr. Uh, Council, Mr. President, can we have a, 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 a official count here? Shaking his head. Do you want uh, official count is four yay, five, five yay, huh. five, five yay, three, three nay. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I believe you need six votes to suspend the rules. Okay, that's it. We're done. All right, counselors. We haven't voted on that yet, have we? No, you got the. You didn't have six. Didn't have six. We're done. Right. Well, just to let you know, <laughs> just to let you know, uh, before we adjourn, Sad. that we have uh, unfinished business. We have not done as we were charged. And uh, I'm just expressing my disappointment. Me too. Um, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Second. We have to, yes, remember, stick around for executive session. So we're mm -hmm. adjourning out of the regular meeting. We'll go into executive session. Uh, but to the motion for adjournment, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Oh. <laughs> 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 You don't need six. You don't need, you don't need six. six. That's true. Yeah. We're not suspending. It's not a super majority right. to adjourn. Uh, Council Murphy made the motion. Uh, Council Specter, did you second the motion? No. Who seconded the motion? I Council did. Tacey. We both. If we yeah. just stay here for There, uh, no the voting to adjourn was Council Adams, Council Tacey, Council LaBarge, Council Freeman, and Council and Councilor Carney? I voted not to adjourn. I voted not to adjourn, and Councilor Murphy voted, voted not to adjourn. I'm sorry? I did not vote to adjourn. I want this to continue. All right. All those who vote yes to adjourn, please raise your hand. Three vote to adjourn. All those who voted no to adjourn, please raise your hand. But we just can't. We, we just, we can't, just can't, can't do, do any business. Just we just have to stay here. Then why don't we just? Can you? I mean, if, if, for the, if this can be done procedurally, we we should probably try the eleven again. I'll, I'll change my vote for the first time I've ever voted. I will vote. For the first time. I, I don't know that we can do that. Okay. I mean, we can also just leave. I mean. I, <laughs> well, we can't we can leave. leave. We, have we have to stay. Session. We just oh, no. can't do anything. But we are in purgatory now. You can't leave and you can't do anything. Well, no, we can leave if we get five people to vote to adjourn, but we don't have, we don't have that. So we just sit. You <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> set my alarm. Can we look? We got it. So, so I'm reading the rules. Okay, Council meeting you. shall end no later than 11. So since we couldn't suspend the rules, election. the council meeting ends. But we still need a mo we need to adjourn formally, don't we? Mm -mm. Eleven o'clock. We are forced into adjournment by the rules. Mm -hmm. I believe is what's being suggested. Mm -hmm. So let's presume that, so we don't literally die here. And but can we have an executive and, uh, session? Uh, yes, we can because we are adjourned. So now, I say so, and I I challenge someone to rule me out of order. Thank you. Yes, we're adjourned.